On day one, I spawned in as a stray cat. I've only got a few hearts, but look how quick I am. I noticed that I was starting to feel hungry, so I immediately started looking for food. As I explored, I soon saw a small village up ahead. I checked one of the houses and noticed that there was some meat on the table. Oh, perfect, just what I need. I hopped up on the table and grabbed it. Hey, get out of my house. The human clearly didn't want me here. I wasn't ready for a fight, so all I could do was run. I kept running until I was back in the woods from before. Why was he so mean to me? This is going to be a hard 100 days if no one wants to be my friend. I kept exploring the woods when I saw a group of cats up ahead. More cats! Hi guys! Oh hey, you must be new around here. We were just trying to figure out how we were going to get some dinner. You're telling me. I just took some meat from one guy's house and he chased me all around. But here, I'll share it with you guys. The cats were really thankful and excited about the meat. They must have been really hungry. I was glad to have met them. We were going to have all kinds of great adventures together. Before we had realized it, night had fallen. That was when we were suddenly attacked by a zombie. Quick, into the trees. My new cat friends had all climbed into the trees, but I wasn't fast enough. I had no choice but to fight. Luckily, the zombie wasn't very strong, and I was able to fight him off. But that was just one, and a whole group of skeletons were suddenly on me. I've got to get away! I ran off and soon saw a thick tree. I hurried and punched a hole in it where I was able to crawl inside, away from the skeletons. That was way too risky. I'll have to stay in here for the night. On day two, I woke up to one of my new cat friends punching a hole in the tree. Come on, Zozo. We've got to start looking for food. What do you mean? I thought cats got to lay around and be lazy all day. That's just house cats. Strays like us have to work hard all day to survive. Come on! I hopped out of the tree and got to work punching some trees and collecting wood. With the wood I collected, I made a crafting table, then used the crafting table to make a wood pickaxe shovel, axe, and sword. I'm gonna have to get even more wood if I'm gonna make myself a proper base. Using my new wood axe, I got to work chopping down some more wood. That's when I heard the sound of a spider and was suddenly attacked. Back off, you creepy crawler. The claws were still stronger than a wooden sword, so I swung them and managed to take the spider out. Not too much later, even more spiders attacked. I was really quick and nimble, so I had no problem taking them out too. All right, that's enough spider fighting. I need to get working on that base. I climbed up a nearby tree and started working on a treehouse. It was hard enough that we would have to scrounge for food. We didn't need to be constantly fighting off mobs too. Speaking of food though, I saw a small bird had landed on the other side of my treehouse. Ooh, that bird looks delicious. I positioned myself, then sprang forward, missing the platform. There was a loud crunch as I hit the ground. I landed on my feet, but falling from a big height still hurt. To my surprise though, my health started going up. That's when a counter appeared, showing that my nine lives were now down to eight. Just then, my cat friend came running over. Oh, thank goodness. I heard you fall and was worried it might have been your last life. Nope, I've still got eight to go. Oh, well, you're lucky. The rest of us have been strays for a while, and we're all down to our last one. Hopefully, you're never in our position. There was no time to talk, though, as suddenly, a pack of wolves came out of nowhere and attacked. Zozo, run! We all split up and ran off in different directions. Why were these wolves chasing us? Come here, you little snack. Oh, because they wanted to eat us. Of course. I managed to jump into my tree and climb up to the top. Thankfully, the wolves were too big to fit in my tree. You got away this time, but we'll be back. You can't get away from our boss. I didn't like the sound of that, but at least for now, they were leaving me alone. As long as I can climb trees, I'm sure I'll be safe. Later, my cat friends climbed up with me, and together we all watched the sunset. At least we all had each other. On day three, I woke up to a terrifying sound, the sound of wolf howls. It was scary, but we were still safe in the trees. But that's when I saw him. What is that? A giant wolf monster was headed our way. This must be the other wolf's boss. You can't hide from me. The monster wolf climbed up the side of the tree, up onto our platform. Watch out, guys run! We all ran off in different directions, but it was too late. The wolves managed to get all of my friends, knocking them out one by one. No, oh, my friends! There was nothing more I could do. Somehow I was the lucky one, and they didn't notice me up in the tree. As the wolves left, all I could think about was how alone I felt. Those wolves are gonna pay for what they've done. Mark my words! On days four to five, I woke up in my unfinished base. It's not safe here in the forest. I'll have to find a new place to live. I left the forest and headed off. I had heard once that cats were originally desert animals, so I decided I would find a desert far from here to live in. I'm sure wolves won't like the desert heat, too. A desert will be twice as safe. As I entered the desert, I decided that I was going to build the greatest cat tower the world had ever seen. Plus, it would be really safe to live in. Triple safety. If I'm gonna do this, I've gotta get stone, and lots of it. I found myself a nice cave and snuck down into it, mining up as much stone as I could. While I was down there, I also made sure to grab some coal that could be used to power my furnace later. Let's get crafting. Using a crafting table, I used my new stone to make myself a stone pickaxe. I also made myself a stone shovel, sword, and axe. Next up, 
Wood. I needed tons of wood. So much that I cleared out an entire area of trees. With my inventory now full of all the building supplies I needed, I started to build the first level of my cat tower that would also double as my starter base. Once I had finished the outside, I got to work filling up the inside. I put up some pictures as well as all the tables I was going to need. Soon, the first level was complete. All right, I think this is going to be a very safe place for me to live. Just as I was saying that, there was an explosion that blew a hole in my wall. What was that? I took a closer look and saw that the base was under attack by creepers. Luckily, there was only one more, so I tried to fight it off. It exploded too, but at least it didn't cause any additional damage to the base. Looks like I better put some torches out. I got right to work, surrounding the base with as many torches as I could. I didn't even want to risk having more creepers blowing me up in the night. Once all the torches were out, I was feeling a little hungry. That's when I saw some desert rabbits hopping around nearby. Dinner! I ran around after the rabbits until I finally managed to take one down. I cooked the meat back at the base and chowed down. That sure was tasty, but I'm gonna have to find out an easier way to eat if I'm going to live here much longer. On day six to eight, I got up and headed out the door. It was enough delay. I needed to start getting ready to fight back against the wolves. It wasn't too long and I found myself heading down into a cave. Time to find some iron. Just inside the cave were several iron veins, so I got right to work mining them all out. After a while, I had gotten plenty of iron and I heard a growl behind me. Who's there? What are you doing in my cave? Leave now or I'll be forced to take you down. Please, I just wanted to collect some iron. These evil wolves destroyed all of my friends and now I have nowhere to call home. I know your pain. My family was taken from me when I was young too. Not by wolves, but by poachers at a nearby village. I've been all alone ever since. Why don't you take revenge on those poachers? Have you seen yourself? You're a big, powerful lion. Uh, you know, I never really thought about it. I guess I didn't realize just how big I've gotten. Yeah, let's do it. Although first I've got to drop this stuff off at my base. You can come along if you'd like. The lion and I ran back over to my base. When we arrived, the lion was impressed. Wow, this is quite the place you've got here. Much better than my cold cave. Thanks. Give me a bit here to get ready to go. I tossed the iron I had collected into the furnace and smelted it all down. When it was done, I got crafting and made myself a full set of iron armor. I even made myself a full set of iron equipment, which the lion was really impressed by. Turned out he was actually really nice. Oh and his name was Lenny. On days 9 to 10, Lenny and I traveled to the village where the poachers were living. As soon as we got there, we could see the poachers. There were tons of small animals in cages, and they even had the lion's family's heads mounted on the wall. These guys were sick. Lenny wasted no time and attacked. I tried to jump in too so that I could help as much as possible. Lenny was so strong and managed to take most of them out. Suddenly, a couple of poachers surrounded him, and it wasn't looking good. Heads up, I jumped down from above and managed to take out the poachers. There were a few more left, but together we were able to take them all out. Nice job, Lenny. I know it can't replace your family, but at least justice has been served. Thank you for encouraging me, Zozo. I feel much better than I did before. I also feel hungry. These little birds look delicious. Oh, hang on. I know we like to eat meat, but these guys don't deserve the same fate as your family. Let's let them go. Lenny was disappointed, but agreed. So we let them all out of their cages. I'm pretty sure some of them got away from Lenny just a little faster than they normally would have. We then headed over to the nearby farm and gathered up as many seeds as we could. If we really wanted to help animals, it looked like we might have to get used to a little more grain in our diets. Except when it comes to chickens. I took out a few chickens to eat later. I was still a carnivore after all. With all that out of the way, I asked Lenny if he wanted to live at my base with me, to which he happily agreed. Back at the base, I got right to work making Lenny his own bedroom. I felt bad he had been living in a cold cave alone all this time, so I did my best to make it really nice. On days 11 to 12, I went to find Lenny to ask him some questions. I asked him if he knew anything about the huge wolf that had taken out his family, but he said he wasn't sure. There was, however, a wise elephant that I could ask. I made my way to a nearby savanna to find the elephant. I tried asking all the animals I passed, but none of them seemed to know who I was talking about. As I was looking, I was suddenly attacked by a pack of hyenas. Leave me alone, you giggle freaks. I managed to hurt some of the hyenas. There were way too many of them. I was still just a little cat and had to get out of there. I managed to make it out of there, which is when I saw a baby elephant. Oh, I bet they know something. I ran over to them. Hey, I'm looking for a wise old elephant. Do you know where I can find them? I do. Come with me. I can show you. As we traveled, I noticed she seemed kind of sad. I soon found out why. We arrived in an elephant graveyard, and she brought me to a grave. This is the elephant you are looking for. She was my grandmother and raised me after my parents died. I'm sorry to say, but she passed recently. I'm sorry to hear that. I heard she was able to help a lot of people. She was. In fact, she taught me how to help people the way she did. She would look into the water and could see things. Do you think you'd be able to help me? A wolf has been destroying all of my friends and their families. I need to find him and stop him. 
I would, but I'm too scared to try it by myself. Before I could say another word though, the hyenas from earlier attacked. But this time I couldn't run away. I had to protect my new friend. As I was fighting the hyenas, the baby elephant ran away. It was a hard fight. These guys were strong and there were a lot of them, but I couldn't fail now. I mustered up the courage and destroyed them all. On days 13 to 15, I went off to search for the baby elephant. That fight must have really spooked her. I've gotta let her know everything is okay. As I ran across the land, I soon saw her at the stream. She was really scared. Hey, I'm sorry about that back there, but everything is okay now. You fought off all of those hyenas? That was really brave of you. Thank you, but can I let you in on a little secret? What's that? I was actually really scared. They had attacked me before and the first time, I ran away. Really? Why didn't you run away this time? I thought about it, but I knew you needed my help so I did my best to be brave. The elephant thought about it for a bit. Okay, I will try using my abilities. You wanna see where the wolf lives? I'll see what I can do. We looked into the stream and she started to explain what she saw. It looks like he built himself an ice fortress in the great tundra. He'll often lead his wolf pack out to attack other animals like cats, but he isn't doing it for food. He's doing it for fun. This doesn't look good. Thank you for doing that. I know it wasn't easy, but you were great. I have to defeat him, but I know I'm not strong enough yet. Say, what's your name? Oh, it's Delilah. Delightful. Would you want to come live at my base with me? It might feel safer there. Well, thank you, but I feel like I'm not ready to leave the land of my grandma yet. But please, come see me anytime. I thanked her and took off. As I was crossing the stream, though, I was suddenly attacked by a crocodile. I already hated water enough. Now there were things attacking me. Come on, you little snapper, leave me alone. I tried to run away, but he was too quick. It looked like my only option was to fight. It wasn't too long, and he managed to take me out. That's when I saw my life counter change from eight lives to seven. Oh no, that's not good. Problem was, I still couldn't run. The croc was vicious and wouldn't leave me alone. Suddenly, I had lost another life. Oh, I can't take much more of this. Luckily for me though, I had been getting hits in, and even though he had taken two of my lives, I was able to finally take his. And he only had one. And stay down. I decided to explore the bank a little more and soon saw the nook where the crocodile must have been hiding. I looked inside and there was a chest. Oh, look at all these fish, my favorite food. And in the middle, there was a mystical wow. fruit salad. I don't really like fruit, but I'll give it a go. I scarfed it down and it turns out it was delicious. Just then, I felt some power surge through me and I got bigger with more hearts. Wow, maybe there's something to this eating fruit thing. On day 16 to 19, I arrived back at the base. I met up with Lenny and he told me that he was feeling really hungry. Hey, you can have some of this fish I just got. He was pretty happy about that. Then I decided I should start planting seeds as we would need to have a good food source. I decided to build the farm into the tower and thought that worked really well. This farm looks great. I was thinking about the fight with the crocodile and how I had lost so many lives. I was going to have to be more careful. So to do that, I decided to craft myself a bow. That way I won't have to be so close to danger all the time. But first, I'm gonna need some string. I took off in the direction of a nearby cave and soon found some spiders. The spiders weren't nearly as happy to see me as I was to see them, and in no time, I had gotten myself enough string to make my bow. Now that I had everything I needed, I was able to quickly put together a bow for myself. It was just in time too, because a black bear had walked up behind me. I hope this thing works. I started firing the bow, landing hits with my arrows. The bear was angry with me, but I was feeling way better with my ranged weapon. Soon enough, I had taken him out. On days 20 to 22, I had the urge, the urge to build. It was statue time. But in order to do that, I was gonna need some wool. I went and talked to Lenny about it and he told me there was a herd of sheep nearby he was thinking of hunting. No, you can't hunt these guys. We'll need their wool. Lenny was disappointed, but agreed. He wasn't taking to a plant-based diet as easily as I was. I headed off in the direction Lenny had mentioned and soon saw the sheep. I took out my wheat and led them back toward my base. When we arrived, I quickly put together a pen then locked them all inside. That's when Lenny came around the corner. Okay, dinner. Lenny, wait. You promised you weren't going to eat them, remember? They're for wool, not food. Ah, shoot. Fine. Next up, I needed to get some dye to turn the sheep into the proper colors. I went to the plains by him and found some cornflowers. Using the flowers, I was able to make some blue dye and dye the sheep blue. Now it was time to get started. Using the wool, I started on the first part. I feel like this one is going to turn out even better than anything I've built so far, but you'll have to be the judge of that. Soon, the first part was complete. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. Otherwise, you'll miss out on all my future adventures. On days 23 to 26, I felt like it was time to learn more about this wolf monster and travel to the Arctic where he lived. As I got closer, I heard some wolf howls and hurried up into a tree to hide. I'm not letting them catch me off guard this time. Just then, I saw the wolves come by, and as they got closer, I saw that I had a good shot with my bow. 
only there weren't so many of them. I decided it wasn't worth the risk, especially with the wolf monster there. But now I knew for sure that he lived here. As I watched them, I saw them go toward a snowy village. They attacked some of the villagers and took out their livestock. These guys were horrible. They continued through the village, taking everything out. When there was nothing left, they left the village. Why would they do something like this? Now that they were gone, I went to investigate the village. There were some crops here, and it didn't look like the villagers were going to be needing them anytime soon, so I picked up as much as I could. As I was going through the village, I suddenly ran into a baby wolf. What the, what are you doing here? Hey you, leave me alone or else. I'm super mean because I'm a wolf. Look buddy, you're not fooling anyone. All the other wolves are gone. Fight me if you want, but we know how it's gonna end. Ah oh, shucks, you're right. If the other guys knew I was gonna get shown up by a cat, they'd bully me so bad, even worse than they already do. Why do you think I'm here? They're always leaving me behind and being so mean. I couldn't help but feel bad for this little guy. Look, it's okay. I remember what it was like being a little cat. Why do you say you come join me instead? These guys don't sound like they really care about you. You can say that again. You know what? I'm out of here. Just because we're all wolves doesn't mean I have to put up with them. He was pretty fired up, but I was glad I could help him out. We took off back to the base. On days 27 to 31, we arrived back at the base. The baby wolf, whose name was Willie, immediately tried to eat the sheep. Hang on, hang on, those are our friends, not food. Here, let me get you something. I tossed him some fish, which he was happy to have. That's when Lenny came walking up to us. It turned out he had really been starting to enjoy the veggie life and wanted to share some with us. We headed up to the garden and Lenny tossed some new food out for us. I took a bite. Oh wow, these are really good. You aren't joking. Just then, I grew a little bigger and gained more hearts. Well, would you look at that? Eating veggies is actually good for you. You get more hearts and stay healthy. Nice. I then realized that Willie had nowhere to stay, so I got busy building him his own section of the base. It wasn't big, but it would be perfect for him. Since Lenny was so interested in farming now, I decided I would put a barn together for him too. This way he could put all his farming tools in one place and hopefully continue to not eat the sheep. Soon, the build was complete. I was starting to run low on wood, so I headed over to the nearby birch forest to stock up. I collected all the wood I needed, then decided to head back. On my way back, I was suddenly attacked by a giant cockroach. How oh, gross, if I would have known there were bugs like this here, I wouldn't have chosen to live here. I had managed to make my way into a tree where I was able to pick them off with the bow. But suddenly, Willie came running into the fight. Willie, no, stay back. Willie ignored me and kept fighting. But it turned out, he was actually a really good fighter. Soon, we had taken them out. Oh, nice moves. Those other wolves better watch out. You'd be able to kick their butts. Willie told me I was being too nice, and we headed back to the base. Later on, I had gone into the mines where I found some iron. I figured Willie could use some armor, so I collected it as much as I could. Back of the base, I smelted down the iron, then used the iron ingots to make him his very own set of iron armor. I went and gave it to him, which he was very excited about. On days 32 to 35, I woke up to the sound of meowing. Could that be more cats? I went to take a look and it turned out there were a bunch of cats out there. Oh hey guys, how did you find me? There's a giant cat tower in the middle of the desert. How could we miss it? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good point. They asked if they could live here, and I of course agreed. That did leave me with a problem though. I couldn't fit all of them in my room. So I got right to work making them their own rooms at the top of the tower. I couldn't believe more cats were around. I would have to keep an eye out for some more of them. Once I had finished building their houses, I went to work on the statue with Willie. I had to get the next part done. If my cat tower was drawing people in, I'm sure a big statue would bring them in too. Soon, we finished the second part. Back at the base, I decided to check in with the cats. They had settled in nicely. Hey, do you guys know of any other cats? I'd love to help as many as I can. Well, there is this one woman we had heard of who takes in cats and cares for them. We were actually on our way there when we found your base. You could try checking there. They explained to me where I needed to go. I wanted to make as many cat friends as I could. We would be stronger together. On days 36 to 39, I arrived in the desert the cats had mentioned, but I didn't see a house anywhere. Mm, let me see if someone can help me. I talked to every animal I ran into, hoping they could point me in the right direction. But everyone I talked to said they hadn't heard of her. That's when I suddenly stumbled upon a huge desert pyramid. Well, it's not the house I'm looking for, but maybe there's something useful in here. I headed into the pyramid, which is when I saw a horde of zombies at the bottom. Luckily, I still had my bow, so I used that to hurry and take most of them out. Then I jumped down and finished the rest of them off with my sword. As I explored, I came across more zombies, but I was able to fight them off. Just then, I saw a button with a sign next to it. Just a normal button, trust me. Okay. I hit the button and another button rose up out of the ground. I shrugged and hit that button. I heard a noise in the other room and ran over to see a hole had opened up in the ground. Oh, what could be down here? I went down in the hole and found another button. This is getting a little ridiculous. I hit the button, which revealed a hidden room full of gold. Wait, seriously? I thought for sure this must have been a trap. 
I entered the room and started picking up all of the loot. This is some good stuff. I checked the chest and saw there was an enchanting book for Punch too. Oh, now my bow is really gonna be able to knock people back. I was feeling pretty good about things, so I headed back out of the pyramid, off to try and find the woman's house. On days 40 to 43, I was running through some hills when I saw a group of llamas. Hey, do you guys know where I could find a cat lady's house? To my luck, they knew exactly who I was talking about. Turns out the house was just over the hill. They told me to be careful though, the lady was pretty weird. I ran in the direction they had pointed and soon saw the house in the distance. I ran up to the house when a woman came running out. Oh, it's another kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Oh, wow, you're super friendly. I heard you had a bunch of cats here and I'd love to meet them. Oh yes, I love cats, they're the best. Maybe you can even stay here with me. Oh, well maybe, I've kinda got my own thing going, but I'd love to say hi to everyone. Well please, please come in, let me show you around. The woman led me into her house and showed me around to the different rooms. I could hear some cats, but none of the rooms we went into seemed to have any cats. Something seemed off, but maybe it was just how much she seemed to love cats. And this final room is my favorite, it's where all the cats live. Finally. I stepped into the room, but all of the cats were in cages. What was going on? You can be my newest friend! Suddenly, I was hit with a potion and went to sleep. On days 44 to 49, I woke up inside of one of the cages on the wall. The crazy cat lady had captured me. I tried my best to break out, but she had taken all of my tools. Is there anyone out there? Yeah, man, I can hear you. Just give up. There's no way to get out of this place. What do you mean? How did you guys end up here? We all thought this was going to be a good place for us strays to live, but she keeps us locked up in cages. She likes cats, but she likes them so much, she never wants us to leave, even for a second. The cat lady had come into the room and was going around feeding the other cats. This might be my moment to escape. As she came to my cage and opened it, I pounced. Out of my way, lady. I saw a chest nearby. My stuff must be in there. Inside, I could see I was right and tried to grab as much of it as I could, but it was no use as I was hit by another one of her potions, which put me back to sleep. I woke up again, back in the cage. Tried punching the walls again, but it was no use. I told you, it's better just to give up. This is our life now. How long have you been in here anyway? Oh, I don't even remember anymore. It's been years. Years? I can't be here for years. What's going to happen to all my friends without me? On days 50 to 53, I awoke in my cage to the sound of panting. It was Willy. Uh -huh. Willy, what are you doing here? Something about this cat lady seemed fishy to me, so I followed you, just in case. Boy, am I glad you did. Willy opened the cage and I hopped out. I was free. I ran over to the chest and grabbed all my stuff. Just then, the cat lady came in. Is that, is that a wolf? I hate dogs and especially wolves. I'll take care of you. The cat lady drank down a potion and turned into a witch. All right, Willy, we can take this lady. We all jumped into battle. She might have been crazy, but she was also crazy strong. Even with our combined power, we couldn't defeat her. Suddenly, I lost one of my lives. Oh shoot, now I'm down to five. I can't let her beat me. I focused all of my energy and took her out. Just then, there was a surge of energy and Willy leveled up. Whoa, Willy, look at you. You're even stronger than before. Willy was super excited. Next, we decided to take a look around the house and managed to find an enchanted diamond helmet. Oh, nice. I'm going to be even more protected than before. Maybe I can hold on to my remaining five lives now. I then met up with the other cats and invited them to come live at my base with me. They happily agreed and we set off. On days 54 to 57, I made it back to the base and got right to work making additions to the base. With all the new cats, we were going to need some serious upgrades. They had spent so long in cages, I wanted to make sure they had a nice place to live. Soon, their room was complete. Later on, I was chatting with the cats when they told me how hungry they were. I was pretty much out of fish, and I couldn't ask them to stick to a plant-based diet. Although to be fair, Lenny had really gotten into it. Hang on guys, I've got an idea. I headed back down to the base and went over to the water. Using my shovel, I dug out the land until I was able to connect the small pond near our base to the river. Now the water would run right by our front door and fish could swim right up. I felt like it still needed something though, so I got to work building a fishing dock. We could store our fish and relax here while the cats could cast a line into the water. Once the dock was complete, I led all the cats over to check it out. What do you guys think? We should be swimming in fish in no time. They were all happy as they threw their lines into the water. They'd never have to be hungry again. On days 58 to 62, I collected some wool off the sheep, then headed back over to the statue. I got to work on the next part. I'm sure it's pretty clear what I'm building at this point, but what do you think? Was this what you were expecting me to build? Once I had finished my work on the statue, I remembered I had gotten some enchanting books. Using my new book, I was able to add the punch enchantment to the bow. This will certainly pack a punch now. My bow was great, but I was going to need armor to match, so I left the base to go to a nearby mine. At the bottom of the mine, I could see a bunch of monsters, so I decided to take the new bow for a spin. It was working great, and I managed to take out a ton of them. Some of them got really close to me, but I still managed to take them out, one by one. 
Whew, hopefully there's not any more of them down here. I kept exploring and soon came across another group of creepers. Oh no, not more of these guys. I tried to take them out, but couldn't stop them all from exploding. Ouch. But what's that? I noticed the explosion had revealed an unnatural block and could hear skeletons on the other side. I broke a block, which revealed the entrance to a dungeon. On days 63 to 66, I knocked out the rest of the blocks and was immediately rushed by some skeletons. Oh, get out of here, you psychos. These skeletons were fast. It's a good thing I came prepared. They tried their best to take one more of my lives, but I managed to fight them all off. All right, let's see what's going on back here. I entered the dungeon and can see more skeletons. Using my bow, I quickly fired at them and took them out. That's when I noticed a button in the middle of the room. What does this do? Unfortunately, it was a trap. More skeleton archers rose up from the ground. I was surrounded. They fired their arrows as I jumped to get out of the way. Luckily, I could take some cover, but even as I jumped out to hit them, it was still too hard. Oh, wait a second, they're stuck. I can just leave. I headed into the hallway. I guess whoever laid that trap didn't think it all the way through. I went and explored the hallways. I wasn't sure where to go next. Then I came across a sign that said treasure room. Huh? Oh, that sounds great to me. I ran into the hallway, falling into a hole. It was another trap. Oh man, I should have known that would happen. I landed in a stone room where there was no way out. Suddenly, the wall across from me started moving. I was going to get crushed. There's gotta be a way out. I noticed some different looking blocks and started mining. At the last second, I burst through and fell down another hole. This time, though, I landed in a pool of water. Oh, this place is crazy. I've got to watch my step. Up ahead, I hit a button to open the door and walked through as lava fell from the ceiling. Luckily, I made it through the door quick enough before it could hurt me. The next room was full of lava with platforms I had to jump to. That would have been easy, except the place was full of skeleton archers. I tried to cross, but they knocked me into the lava. Ooh, hot, hot. I managed to crawl out before the lava burnt me to a crisp. I started shooting arrows at the skeleton, taking a couple of them out. That's when I noticed there was a chest and some diamonds up ahead. Oh, I've got to get to that. To reach it though, there was one more archer. I took careful aim and fired, taking him out. The treasure is all mine. I hopped the rest of the way up and opened the chest. Inside, there was a diamond block as well as a bunch of diamonds. This is exactly what I was searching for. With everything out of the chest, I then mined out all of the diamonds in the wall. My pockets were now overflowing with goodies. Now how do I get out of here? I hopped across the room and saw a door, which I barely managed to get through after grabbing onto some vines. I swam up a waterfall and followed the hallways until I saw another room with a chest. Okay, there's gotta be a trap in here. I stepped forward slowly and set off a trap. That arrow nearly took my head off. I think there's only one way through. I took off at a sprint as the arrows flew by. Inside the chest was more diamonds as well as some XP potions. I ran back through the traps, then loaded up on the XP. I went back through the hallways and soon saw another path through. I guess this must be the way out. I stepped forward when suddenly a bunch of lava came falling from the ceiling, trapping me inside the room. That was way too close. As I looked into the room though, I saw it was full of skeletons, including a big buff skeleton. There was no time to lose. I immediately started shooting my bow, taking out as many of them as I could. I got some hits in, but it was getting dicey. I didn't notice the buff skeleton had me in his sights and after a good hit, he knocked out one of my lives. Oh no, now I only have four left. Over half of them are gone. I didn't have any other choice though. I had to keep fighting. I had managed to hit him a bunch, so he couldn't have had much health left. I hid behind a pole, then struck him with my claws, taking him out. Yeah, who's the tough guy now? And we'll just pretend that you didn't take one of my lives. That's when I noticed that I had actually picked up his head. Ooh, creepy. I wonder what else is in here. I ran around the room and saw a chest, which had an infinity enchantment in it, as well as some gold. In another chest, I also found a brand new bow. I knew just what to do next. At a nearby anvil, I added the infinity enchantment to my new bow, which gave me endless arrows. By now my pockets were filled with goodies, so I used some cobblestone to block the lava and left the dungeon. Back at the base, I stuck my mutant skeleton head above my door. Now everyone knows that this house belongs to one tough kitty. Now that I had a bunch of diamonds, I went over to the crafting table and got right to work, crafting myself an entire set of diamond armor. I was going to be super protected now. With the armor done, I also made myself a full set of diamond tools. It was just about time, as the iron tools just weren't going to cut it anymore. With all of the tools finished, I grabbed Willy and we got to work on the next part of the statue. It was time to add some details in, and I was excited to see how it was going to look. It didn't take too long, and we soon finished the next part. Back at the base, I was feeling like I was almost ready to take on the wolf monster, but asked Willy if he had any ideas of what I could do to power up. Well, there's a special set of claws I've heard about. They're strong enough to rip through wolf hide. That sounds like just what I need. Where do I find them? There's a fort pretty far away from here that they are rumored to be in, but it's got some tough mobs defending it. I can show you the way. That would be awesome. But first, let me go check with Lenny to see if he has any new veggies for me to take on the journey. I went up to the garden with Lenny and he gathered me a fresh set of food. Thanks, buddy. You've gotten good at this. On day 71 to 74, Willie and I had reached a snowy taiga biome when suddenly we were attacked by a polar bear. I had just upgraded all of my gear, so the polar bear didn't really stand a chance against me. Together, we defeated him easily. Yeah, that was so easy. 
Suddenly, a bunch of polar bears came running out. Oh, this is not easy. The polar bears were really mad at us, and we were taking a lot of hits. This situation was all too familiar, and I suddenly lost another one of my lives. Oh no, only three left now. I had lost another life, but we had made good progress, and together, we were able to take out the last of the polar bears. It helped that Willie was now a full-grown wolf. We soon found a cave and settled in out of the cold. Thanks for coming along with me, Willie. I thought all wolves were bad, but you've shown me that's not the truth. Willie didn't say anything and started walking around in circles. It was kind of strange, but maybe he just wasn't comfortable expressing his feelings. It was getting pretty cold when Willie set out a campfire. Oh, just in time. We both settled in for the night. On days 75 to 78, Willie and I reached the snowy fortress deep in the taiga. This must be where the claws are. We entered the fort, but as we walked through, I couldn't help but notice the place seemed empty. There might have been a battle here long ago, but there was definitely no one here now. As we entered another section, the doors closed behind us. Oh no, it must be a trap. Get ready, Willie. That's when I realized it wasn't an enemy who set the trap. It was Willie. I'm sorry, Zozo, but I can't resist my natural instincts. I tried, but cats are just too delicious. What are you saying? Come on, we're friends. I have a lot of respect for you. I didn't know a cat could be this strong, but I have to do this. And once you're gone, I'm going to lead the pack to all the other cats in the base. Willie, get a hold of yourself. This isn't the right way. I'm sorry, Zozo, but it's the end. And just like that, we began to fight. Willie had gotten really strong, and his blows really hurt. I couldn't believe his instincts were this powerful. Please, Willie, it doesn't have to be like this. But it was too late. He was done talking, and I could see his wolf instincts had completely taken over. He kept swinging at me and managed to take another one of my lives. Ugh, only two left. I hurried and climbed up some trees, making my way to the top of the ruins. From there, I started firing arrows, landing some blows. Willie ran around, trying to avoid my arrows. It was making him really mad. I wasn't going to be able to finish it this way, though. I had to land a blow up close. I hurried and climbed higher into the ruins, firing arrows as I went. Get back down here! I climbed out the side of the ruins as Willie continued to look up where I was before. I snuck up behind him and delivered a sneak attack. It was just a few hits more, and he was finally defeated. Willie, why? I'm sorry it had to come to this. I ran outside and picked a flower. I carried it back inside and laid it where Willie had disappeared. I'll see you in the next life, my friend. On day 79 to 84, I was feeling really sad about the loss of Willie. I couldn't help but think though, Willie was super strong and he was just a regular wolf. What chance did I have against the wolf monster? That's when I remembered Delilah the elephant could help. I traveled back to the savannah and just in time too. Up ahead, I could see Delilah had been captured by poachers. You thugs get away from my friend. I charged in as the poachers turned to fight. I had no time for these punks and I had to save my friend. There was no way I was going to lose two friends in such a short amount of time. I was way stronger than the last time we had fought poachers and so at long last, I took them all out. Oh Zozo, you showed up just in time. I don't know where I'd be without you. Or well, I guess I do. I'd be dead. You mustn't talk like that but I was hoping you could help me with something. Oh sure, anything. I need to defeat the wolf monster still, but I'm wondering if there are any special items out there that could help me. Could you take a look? Delilah agreed and took a look into some nearby water. Okay, I can see the nether. There's a huge fortress there. And inside, oh, there's some claws. They look like they're strong enough to rip through wolf skin. So those claws are real. Do you know how I can get there? It's showing me a path to the nether portal. It's actually not that far from your base. Wow, that's great news. I'll have to go get them. But before I do, are you sure you still don't want to live at my base? There's so many poachers out here. Oh, I've definitely changed my mind. I would love to live there. Delilah and I headed back toward my base. As we got closer, she caught sight of my statue. An elephant. I love it. It reminds me of my grandma. I miss her so much. I wish I could have met her. I'm almost finished with that statue too. Just one more part to go, but I think you'll think it's pretty cool. From there, I got right to work building Delilah her own room at the base. The poor girl girl kept getting attacked, so I was glad she decided to come and live at the base with us. Her room was going to be at the top, so she was definitely going to be safe. Soon, her room was complete. Here you go. I really hope you like it here. Delilah assured me she would, and she especially loved the view out of her window. On days 85 to 89, I headed straight for the nether portal. I had to get those claws. Oh no, it looks totally destroyed. Hopefully there's some more obsidian in this chest. I opened the chest and luckily, there was everything I needed. Someone must have been here before. Just then, a snapping turtle came walking right over the chest and attacked. Ah, you're so slow and creepy. He wasn't very strong and I took him out quickly. Then another animal attacked me out of nowhere. This guy wasn't strong either and I took him out too. All right, enough. Let's do this. I quickly fixed up the portal, replacing all the missing obsidian blocks. I stepped into the portal and was teleported to the nether. I stepped out into a soul sand valley and could see a few endermen roaming around. As long as I don't look at them, I should be good. But as I got closer, 
They turned and started to attack me. I guess they just really wanted me to stay away. Once I had taken them out, I took a look at my surroundings. That's when I noticed some ancient debris in the wall. Oh yeah, I can make some netherite gear with this. I mined out the debris and stored it away for later. It was time to explore. I took off into the nether, traveling across dangerous terrain and fighting off endermen. I found some more ancient debris too. There were also some gas that showed up, but I was able to take care of them with my bow. Soon, I saw it in the distance, the fortress from Delilah's vision. There it is. I just need to get across this lava and the claws will be mine. I started jumping across the broken path, being sure not to fall into the lava. As I entered the fortress, I was suddenly attacked by a hellhound and a couple wither skeletons. Oh, I should have known something would be waiting for me. I tried to climb up some platforms as quickly as I could and started taking them out with my bow. The wither skeletons were getting too close for comfort, but luckily I was able to take them down. Now it's your turn. I jumped down and started swinging my sword, showing the hellhound who was boss. Even the dogs in a different dimension are mean. I kept swinging my sword and finally took the hellhound out. That was a tough fight. He destroyed most of my armor. But the important thing was that I had won. I went over to the chest and took a look inside. There was tons of loot, and most important, the claws were inside. I can't believe it. I got them. I took out the claws and equipped them. That's when I felt the energy surge through me, and I grew into a huge, super buff cat. Whoa, I'm extremely ripped, and I have way more hearts. It was time to take the fight to the wolf. On days 90 to 94, I returned to the base to see all of my new friends. It was quite the sight to see everyone so happy. We had all been affected by the wolf monster in one way or another, and it was great to see that despite it all, we had all found a place to call home. I was too big to fit in the door now, so I knocked out a space and grabbed some supplies out of a chest. Then I made myself a fancy new moving door. Ah yes, this will work perfectly. Now that I had a functioning door, I took the ancient debris I had collected and smelted it into some netherite scraps. Then I took some of the diamonds I had collected and made an entire set of diamond armor. Now I'll need a smithing table. I got the smithing table put together and then combined the netherite scraps with some gold bars to make some netherite ingots. Using the new ingots, I was able to then convert all my diamond gear into netherite. Now let's finish the statue. I headed outside and finished putting all of the details on the elephant. I thought it looked really nice and I was glad that it reminded Delilah of her grandma. Well, what do you think? Is this your favorite build I've done so far? Or did you like another one more? With the statue complete, it was time to say goodbye. I met with all of my friends outside. Thanks for all of your support, guys. I'm going to go fight the wolf, but I'm still not sure how I'm going to beat him. I was thinking about it, and didn't you say that crazy cat lady threw a potion at you that knocked you out? Maybe she had other potions that could come in handy for your fight. Oh, that's a great idea. I'll have to go stop by there and see what I can find. Good luck, Zozo. I know you'll make us all proud. The rest of the animals chimed in. I never could have done it without all of their support. Time to get that wolf. On days 95 to 97, I arrived back at the cat lady's house. All right, let's see what's going on in here. I ran up to the house to get inside. As I tried to take a look around, I realized I was too big for the doors, so I knocked out the walls to make myself some space. Something tells me she's not gonna mind. As I checked around the house, I eventually opened up her bedside table and found a bunch of blindness potions. No wonder she always had these on her. The lady literally slept next to them, but these will help in a fight. With the potions in my pockets, I headed off toward the wolf monster's base. I soon reached a snowy area and could hear the howling of wolves in the distance, but this time I wasn't running. This time I was heading straight for them. Hey you boys, check out this cat. He thinks he's real tough walking into our land like this. Your pride will be the end of you. I'm gonna take down your entire pack. Oh cry me a hairball, fuzzbag. Bring it on. We lunged at each other and started swinging. These guys thought I was weak because I was a cat, but they quickly found out I was super strong. I could tell they were scared, and soon only one of them was left. You're no cat, you're a freak. Just wait until the boss hears about this. The last wolf ran off to tell his boss. Yeah, not even a warning is going to save him from me. The wolf wasn't very smart though. He was leading me right to their base. Soon enough, I saw a large fortress in the distance. This must be it. I walked up and started to explore. I could feel something behind me. I turned around and saw there was a huge sub behind me. Quick, subscribe to the channel. We must win this fight. On day 98, I charged into the base and was immediately attacked by some wolves. Out of the way, you mangy mutts. I swung my massive arms and knocked the wolves out. With my strength, these guys were a breeze. Soon, the room had been cleared. That's when I noticed something horrible. Is that what I think it is? On the stairs, there was a mounted animal head. These guys were a bunch of sickos. They had to be stopped. In the next room, there were even more wolves. Get a load of this, chumps. I smacked the wolves as they crumpled beneath my blows. They were able to get some hits in, but they were no match. No one was going to stop me from reaching my goal. Once they were all destroyed, I noticed what was on the table. More animal heads. I won't let them add any more. As I left the room, I noticed a button on a nearby wall. I hit it and a wall opened, revealing a storage room. Oh nice, I bet there's something good in here. I started opening up chests and found a lot of gold, including some golden apples. Then I saw something out of the ordinary. There's warnings on this chest. Must be something good in here. 
I opened the chest and saw I had several potions of leaping. That would surely give me an advantage in the fight. Now I just had to find the monster. On day 99, I wandered through the halls and eventually walked into the Great Hall. The wolf monster was seated on a golden throne. Oh, what is this? A cat walking right into my house? Who do you think you are? You know who I am. You destroyed my entire group of friends. Yeah, you'll have to be more specific. I do it all the time. It's literally all I do. I'm Zozo. Oh, Zozo. Yeah, I still don't know who you are. It doesn't matter. Today is the day I take my revenge. Yeah, yeah, get this cat out of my sight. Suddenly, the wolves around the table charged. He might not know who I am, but he was about to find out. I knocked out his wolves in no time. Ugh, I always knew I was surrounded by a bunch of weaklings. I'll do this myself. The wolf monster charged at me. The fight had begun. This was ending today. He was still strong and was really knocking me down. I ran away to try to get some space, eating some food to heal. Get over here, you little cat. I tried fighting him as I went, getting hits in here and there. I soon made it up a set of stairs, turning in time to start firing down arrows at the wolf monster. Oh, knock it off! I kept firing arrows until he had reached me. He kept hitting me, and eventually I saw my life counter appear again. I only had one life left. I had to make it count. I kept running through the castle, trying to play it safe. Every now and then he would catch up, and I would swing my claws to knock him back. Some of his wolves even tried to jump into the fight, but I was able to knock them away. My health was starting to get really low though. All right, let's see what he thinks of this. I took out one of my blinding potions and managed to hit him. Oh, I can't see. What did you do? The wolf ran off as I heard and ducked for cover. I was safe for a moment, so I heard and ate a golden apple. I had been getting hits in, but it didn't seem to be enough. It was time to try something new. I could hear the wolf in the hallway up ahead, so I snuck up behind him and smacked him. Surprise! Oh, you sneaky little cat. We exchanged some more blows, and I ran off, making more space. I was really starting to hurt him now. Just then, we ran into a room with a couple of his wolf cronies. Get this guy off my back! I thought wolves didn't run away from anything. As I went back out to fight, I saw the wolf had disappeared. Where did he go? I kept searching around the place until I ran into a strange sign. Place sacrificial heads. Oh, I don't love that, but maybe it could help me. I ran around the palace and gathered up a few of the animal heads. Then I placed them on the altar. Suddenly, a hidden door opened, and the wolf monster was hiding on the other side. There he is! I ran up to face him. Give it up, man. You can't beat me! The wolf shook his head. He wasn't going to go down easily. We charged as his sidekicks attacked. It was an epic battle, but they were no match for me. I even tried using the leaping potions, which helped me to get to higher ground and use my bow. This is for everyone you've hurt! I swung my claws, hitting him again and again. He wasn't even sorry for what he had done. At long last, I swung my claws, destroying him for good. Goodbye. The wolf was finally gone. Now we could all live our lives in peace. On day 100, I made it back to the base. All of my friends were there to greet me, and I couldn't believe the fight was done. We were finally free from danger. The world was once again a place of peace. On day one, I spawned in as a rabbit. Oh no, I only have one heart. I'm gonna have to be really careful if I'm gonna survive. But check it out, I can jump high and I'm super fast. I took a look around and I could see there were tons of other bunny friends around. But suddenly, they all ran away. Hey guys, what's going on? Just then, a fox appeared. That must be why the other bunnies ran away. I had to be careful. If that fox landed just one hit on me, I was done for. Luckily, I was able to run really fast and jump super high, so I was able to outrun the fox and get away. The best thing I can do today is just survive. I better find a good place to hide for the night. I took a look around until I found a good spot. I dug into the side of the hill and hunkered down for the night. Maybe I can find all of my bunny friends in the morning. On day two, I woke up and went to go look for my bunny friends. As I arrived back at the spawn point, I didn't see anyone around. Where could everyone have run off to? I wasn't sure where to start looking for them, but I had an idea. Maybe if I can build a really cool bunny house, they'll come back. If I was gonna build a cool bunny house, I needed some tools, so I headed off into the forest to get some supplies. After a while, I had gathered enough supplies to be able to build my first tools. I put as many tools together as I could, including a sword. With my new tools in hand, I headed into the mine to get some stone. As I was mining, I was suddenly attacked by a spider. Whoa, get back! I had to be really careful. If if I took even one hit, I was done for. It's a good thing I had made myself a sword though, because with that, I was able to defeat him. Oh man, that was too close. I better get to work. On day three, I got to work starting to build my new base. Since rabbits live underground, I thought it'd be cool to build out a bunch of tunnels underground. It was a lot of hard work, but soon the base was all set up. All right, the base is done, but I don't see any more bunnies. I better go look for them. I headed off into the forest, but I could hear someone up ahead. On top of a tree, I could see a little squirrel. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing up there? I'm up here hiding from the big bad wolf. You 
You better watch out too. The big bad wolf? Oh man, he sounds like a lot of trouble. How about we stick together? It'll be safer. I think that's a great idea. On days four to five, the squirrel and I headed into the forest to get some more materials. As we explored the forest, we came across some more friends. The first animal we saw was a raccoon. Hey, have you heard of the big bad wolf? Yeah, that guy's a real jerk, but he's been leaving me alone for the most part. I don't know if I want to get involved. Sorry. Well, I hope you change your mind. The squirrel and I kept going through the forest until we came across a bear and her cubs. Uh-oh, I hope that bear won't eat us. I took a deep breath and walked up to the bear. Hey, do you know the big bad wolf? Yeah, but why would I care about that guy? He doesn't bug me and I don't bug him. Say, you're looking a little tasty. Um, okay, well, thanks for telling me about it. Talk to you later. Bye. The squirrel and I got out of there. I didn't want to risk anything else wanting to hunt me. As we got deeper into the forest, we started to chop down some trees. Hey, hey you! I turned around and looked up into the tree. A monkey was looking down at me. Uh, yeah, what's up? That's my tree! What do you think you're doing, chopping down my tree? The monkey was mad, but I only needed a little bit of wood. It didn't matter to him, though, and he jumped down and charged. You're gonna pay for this! Uh-oh, if this monkey hit me, I was a goner. But just then, the squirrel jumped in and helped me out. Together, we were able to put up a good fight. The monkey wasn't gonna be able to hurt both of us. By working together, we were able to defeat him. Sorry, Mr. Monkey, I didn't want to fight you, but you left me with no choice. On day six through eight, the squirrel and I continued through the forest. We were feeling pretty good about ourselves. We had had a couple of victories, and we were getting a lot of supplies. We'd even met a few of the other animals. As I kept wandering through the forest, though, I heard something scary up ahead. As we got closer, we saw the source of the noise. It was the fox, and he had a group of bunnies cornered. You have nowhere to run, and now I'm going to eat you. Oh no, I can't let him eat those other bunnies. But what am I supposed to do? I can't take him on by myself. That's when I remembered I wasn't by myself. I had my squirrel friend with me. Let's do this. The squirrel just started to charge. He didn't even wait for me. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, a little appetizer. The fox took one swing, and the squirrel was immediately defeated. Oh no, my friend. Hmm, looks like there's another snack over there for me too. The fox took one look at me, but I had to get out of there. I'm not gonna be his dinner today. I'm sorry other bunnies, but you're on your own for this one. I ran as fast as I could straight back to my burrow. I couldn't risk having him find out where I lived, or worse, eating me. I was just gonna have to help those other bunnies out another day. I feel bad about leaving all those bunnies behind, but what was I gonna do? I'm just not strong enough. On days 9 to 11, I was feeling bad about running away, but I wasn't strong enough to fight. As I ran through the forest, I came across an abandoned village. Oh look, a ton of carrots! I gathered up as many carrots as I could. There was even a bunch of wheat and pumpkins too. I decided this would be a good place to spend the night. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a strange sound outside. Oh no, there's a bunch of skeletons out there. I ran out of the house with my sword in hand. There was no way I was going to back down this time. I charged out of the house, swinging my sword. I'm not scared of you. I kept swinging until one by one, all of the skeletons were destroyed. Man, these fights are terrifying when you only have one heart, but I feel better now that I've won a fight. Even though I had won the fight, I was too scared to go back to bed. So I decided to spend the night looking through the rest of the village. I found some more food, as well as some other supplies. I even found a whole stash of iron. Awesome, now I can start making some iron gear. I ran back over to the crafting table and put together an iron chest plate and equipped it. On day 12, I emerged from my house in the village and headed back into the forest. I was running through the woods when I saw a carrot on the ground up ahead. Oh, what luck, a free carrot. As I continued through the forest, I saw there were even more carrots. I decided to keep picking them up. I was going to need as many as I could get. Just then, I picked up one of the carrots and suddenly fell through a trap door. Whoa, I landed inside a small room and there were several other rabbits looking at me. Uh, hi guys, what's going on? You're not the big bad wolf. I turned around and saw a large elderly bunny looking down at me. No, sir, I'm not. What's going on around here? Oh, I see you're new around here. Let me explain. For years, the forest was a beautiful and peaceful place. All the animals were happy, living in harmony. The wolf would try to hunt us, but we could always get away. Then one day, something changed. The wolf had discovered some kind of magic, which he used to give himself a cloaking ability. Suddenly, we could no longer hide because we didn't know when he would attack. We have been in hiding ever since. No, how can we stop it? Him. There is an ancient relic known as the Rad Glasses, crafted by our bunny ancestors. Its pieces have been scattered across the land, but if you bring them to me, I can craft them anew. They will allow you to see the wolf, even when he cloaks. Do you think you can help us? Not very strong, but I'll do my best. On days 13 to 15, I had arrived back at my base and made a couple improvements to the inside. Then I went outside and started working on a farm and planted some of the carrots I'd collected. It wasn't much, but it was a place to call home. I needed to get some sand though, so I headed off to the desert to gather some. I managed to get a bunch of it when suddenly a group of rattlesnakes came slithering up behind me. Hey guys, can I help you? The rattlesnakes just stared at me, then they attacked. 
Hey, that's not very nice. Luckily, their bite wasn't too bad because I still only had a heart. I was able to keep moving and I took them all out. Suddenly, I felt a burst of energy and I grew into a bigger killer bunny. And look, now I have five hearts. I'm feeling way better already. On day 16 to 19, I returned back to the base and made a few adjustments now that I had gotten a little bigger and stronger. Later, as I was harvesting some of my crops, I saw a squirrel walking up to the base. Hey, I've been looking for you. Hey there, what's up? I saw you were with my sister when that fox attacked her. She seemed to trust you, so I want to help you too, for my sister. I'll take all the help I can get, and I'm sorry for what happened. I'm much stronger now and won't be running away from anything. We then set off, making some more improvements to the base. It turned out the squirrel's name was Rocky, and he was happy to help. After we had finished upgrading parts of the base, he pulled me aside for a chat. Thanks again for letting me help, Zozo. I had an idea for the base. I think we should build something that will make the other bunnies know that this is a safe place. Oh, I know just what to make, but we're gonna need a lot of orange dye. We ran off into a flower field and got to work, grabbing as many orange tulips as we could to make the dye. On days 20 to 22, we were heading back to our base when the fox popped out from around the corner. Ah, the bunny that got away. I'm gonna get you this time. You aren't hurting anyone this time. I jumped into battle and started swinging away at the fox. Rocky jumped into the fight too. With my new strength, the fox didn't stand a chance. We beat him easily. Nice going, Rocky. How did he find our base? I don't know. The only thing I can think of is that he must have seen me and followed me here. Sorry about that. That's okay. But it reminds me. We need to start looking for the parts to those special glasses. Do you have any ideas of where we could look? I've got one idea. But before we get there, we're gonna need some serious upgrades first. On days 23 to 26, I was deep underground looking for resources. Luckily for me, I was able to find a bunch of iron as well as some coal. This is just what I needed. Now I can finish making my iron armor. I took some of the stone I had collected and used it to craft a furnace. Then I added the coal and iron to smelt myself some iron bars. Once the iron bars were complete, I used them to craft myself iron tools, including an iron sword. Then I used the rest to finish crafting my iron armor. Now I'm really powered up. I decided to keep exploring the cave when I suddenly ran into a group of zombies. Try and fight me now, you flesh heads. The zombies could pack a punch, but they were no match for my new gear. I swung my sword and was able to take them out. I kept going down the tunnel when a spider dropped down from the ceiling. Oh, gross. Spiders are disgusting. As the spider charged at me, I swung my sword. He managed to get a couple bites in, but he couldn't do much against my armor. Soon enough, it was defeated. I wonder what's going to be at the end of the tunnel. Up ahead, I could see something glowing in the distance. What could it be? I walked into a large open room and... Subscribe? Hey, it's not a bad idea. If you love going on these adventures as much as I do, I'd love for you to hit the button and the bell. That way, you'll never miss out. On days 27 to 31, Rocky and I headed into the woods to look for the first crafting item we'd need for the glasses. I could hear a noise up ahead when suddenly a wolf hopped up on some stone blocks, blocking our path. Ooh, a delicious bunny. The big bad wolf isn't going to mind if I eat you myself. Go on and hide, Rocky. I can take this guy. The wolf and I charged at each other. He was pretty strong, but so was I. He snarled and bit, getting some hits in. He even got me down to half a heart. But I knew I could win. Your bark is worse than your bite. I gave one more swing and took him out. As he disappeared, I saw he dropped some kind of special item. Huh? What's this? I picked it up and saw it was a fire rod. Oh, cool. I wonder what this will do. Later on, I was walking along the water when a crocodile popped out and attacked me. I swung my fire rod, immediately catching him on fire. Whoa, nothing like a well-roasted croc for dinner. The crocodile panicked and jumped back into the water. Yeah, you'll think twice about messing with me next time. On days 32 to 35, Rocky and I arrived in the bad lands. Rocky had told me he had seen something strange in the area and thought it would be worth checking it out. As we rounded the corner, I saw a weird sign. Let the water lift you up. What does that mean? There was a nearby lever, so I gave it a flick and nothing happened. What happens when you jump in the water? Rocky jumped into the water, but there was no effect. I don't think that's it. Let's try hitting one of these buttons. Rocky clicked on one of the buttons on the wall and an arrow came flying out right over Rocky's head. Whoa, I don't think that's it. I guess I'll give this other one a try. I nervously reached forward and hit the button and some redstone dust popped out. Look, you can put the dust here to complete the circuit. I walked over by Rocky and put down the redstone dust. Then I flipped the switch. This time, a column of water came pouring down. That did the trick. I jumped into the column of water and swam to the very top. When I reached the top, there was a chest. Inside of the chest, there were some different brick blocks as well as one glowstone. Hmm, this isn't exactly what I was expecting. Zozo, up here. I followed Rocky up another flight of stairs and saw some glasses frames at the top. This is just what we were looking for. The first piece. The elder rabbit will be excited to see this. On days 36 to 39, Rocky and I returned back to the base. First things first, I needed to craft a new fence. I couldn't risk another attack by the big bad wolf gang, or worse, the wolf himself. By using some of the brick, I was able to make a nice perimeter fence. Once that was complete, Rocky and I worked together to make him his own place too. Thanks for all your help so far, Rocky. I think it'll be good for you to have your own place. I'm happy to be here. Let's build a fence.
man and get some sheep. That way we can work on the statue. Good idea. Rocky and I headed into the forest and managed to find a herd of sheep. Using leads, we roped them up and led them back to their new pen. With the sheep all locked up, I then took some orange dye and got to work dyeing all of the sheep orange. Orange, you guys glad you're not dinner? I went ahead and sheared all of the sheep then collected all of the orange dye. From there, Rocky and I headed off to find a good spot to build the statue. Once we found a suitable location, we got to work clearing a space, building up a base, then working on the statue itself. After a bit, the first part was complete. Nice job, Rocky. This is a good spot to stop. As we were taking down the scaffolding, a group of parrots walked up to us. Hey, hey, you're Bunny. You must be against the big bad wolf then. You'd be correct. What's up? We've been on the run ever since the wolf started cloaking. Nowhere feels safe. I know what you mean, but there's safety in numbers. You guys should come join us at our base. That's just what we need. We'll go gather our things, and then we'll meet you there. I told them where to go, and they headed off. Back at the base, Rocky and I got to work building them their own house to stay. I couldn't believe the wolf was even hunting birds. We'd do our best to keep them safe. I started days 40 to 43 by putting in some paths throughout the base. The next morning, I got to work harvesting the carrots and planting some pumpkins. Then I filled the rest of the spots with carrots. We've got a lot of new friends starting to show up. I've got to be sure everyone is well fed. Just then, the parrots walked up and I finally got to show them the place I had built for them. They were really excited to have a safe place to rest. After they took a look around, their leader came to talk to me. You're looking for the parts of the rad glasses, right? The ones that let you see the invisible wolf? I am. Do you know something about their parts? Only rumors. I've really only heard heard about one of the parts, that is. But I don't know if you're gonna love where you have to go to find it. I'll do whatever it takes. On days 44 to 49, I was getting ready to leave my base for the new location. I think it'll be better for you to stay here, Rocky. I don't know if this will be the best place for a squirrel. Rocky understood and agreed to work on the base while I was gone. After a long journey, I finally arrived in the area the parrot had told me about. Oh man, it's freezing here. No wonder the parrot said I wouldn't like it. Just then, I stumbled across an abandoned igloo. This will be a great place to stop and rest. As I left the igloo though, I was suddenly attacked by a snow leopard. Whoa, where did you come from? The snow leopard was vicious. He had giant fangs and powerful claws. He must have set this camp up as a trap. I'll never let the wolf and his allies win. I swung with all my power and took him out. It's a good thing I upgraded all my armor before I left. Otherwise, I'd be rabbit stew. On days 50 to 53, I had finally made it out of the cold and arrived at the place the parrot had mentioned. As I walked Walked up to the tower, I saw there were two wolves standing guard. Hey, can I come in? No. Well, that was a short conversation. I don't know why I even bothered asking. They're wolves. Of course they'll just attack me. This wolf was just a junior guard, so I finished him off easily. You're not getting in my way either. I turned and attacked the other guard too, who didn't put up much of a fight, and I defeated him in no time. All right, let's get that glasses part. I climbed to the top of the tower, but there was another wolf waiting for me. This one was stronger than the others. By using my fire rod though, I managed to light him on fire and eventually take him out, nearly losing my life in the process. Hey there, can you help me out? I took out my axe and started chopping away at the nearby cage. There was no part for the glasses, but there was a bunny trapped inside. Thanks for breaking me out. Let me guess, you were looking for a piece of the glass yeah, I was. Do you know anything about it? I was here looking for it too, but I guess it got moved to a dungeon far away from here. That's what I heard the henchmen saying anyway. Shoot, that is in the complete opposite direction. Well, might as well stop at my base in the meantime. Feel free to join me there. The rabbit agreed, and we headed off for the base. On days 54 to 57, the bunny and I arrived back at the base, which was on fire. Oh no, what's going on? As I got closer, I could see that the base was being attacked by a pack of wolves. Standing outside the base, I could see the big bad wolf. He was giving orders to his men. The wolf gang headed into the base and rounded up all the parrots. They were taking them prisoner. I don't have the glasses yet, but I have to do something. I sprinted into the base, sword in hand. The wolves attacked. Get out of my home. We never did anything to you. One by one, I cut down all the wolves. Soon enough, the only one left was Mr. Big Bad. You're gonna pay for this. I charged at the Big Bad Wolf, leaping into the air, when suddenly he disappeared. Ah, oh, you coward. I'll find you. On days 58 to 62, I took a look around at all of the damage. I couldn't believe I didn't keep everyone safe. As I walked around, I could see that everyone was gone. That's when I heard a noise from under the table. Rocky, what are you doing under there? Zozo, I was so scared, but this was all my fault. I told the wolves where the base was. He had captured my squirrel friend and said he would hurt him if I didn't tell him where to go. Rocky, you should have told me. We could have rescued your friend together. I know, I'm so sorry. In the end, he didn't let my friend go and just took away all of our new friends. I hope you can forgive me. I felt bad for Rocky. I could tell he was sorry. It's okay. I know you just wanted to help your friend. We can figure it out together. In the meantime though, we better go get some supplies to rebuild the base. From there, I headed into the mines and managed to find plenty of iron as well as some gold and coal. I smelted down all of the iron and used it to make some iron bars. Then I headed out to the river and scooped up a bunch of clay. I then used the clay to make more bricks. At long last, I headed outside and replaced the fence with iron bars while also repairing any other holes with the bricks. It took a while, but soon the defenses were complete. Those wolves are gonna 
have a heck of a time breaking in again. On day 63 to 66, I told the bunny and Rocky to hang back at the base while I headed out to the dungeon. This could be dangerous, and I didn't want to lose any more friends. The journey was a long one, and I passed through all kinds of different terrain. As I was passing over a mountain, I saw a wolf in the distance, just as it destroyed a baby elephant. It was the big bad wolf. What have you done? <laughs> I charged at the wolf, but he disappeared again. What kind of monster would attack an innocent elephant? As I looked down, the elephant's mom came over the hill. What have you done to my baby? No, it wasn't me. It was the big bad wolf. The elephant didn't care, and she attacked. I took a few swings to keep her back as I tried to explain, but she wasn't listening. My only option was to run away as fast as I could. On day 67 to 70, I could see the entrance to the cave up ahead. It looked really dark and scary. This must be it. Who knows what's waiting for me inside? I entered the cave and soon found out. Waiting for me was a group of skeletons. Ah, why are you guys so creepy? The skeletons swung their swords and shot their arrows as I jumped around, hitting them with my sword. They got some hits in, but I was able to take them all out. I headed deeper into the caves and saw a spawner. Let's just get rid of this. I can't fight these mobs off for forever. On day 71 to 74, I pushed further into the mines when I saw some diamonds. Wow. Oh, those would help me so much. I quickly put up a bridge to cross over when suddenly the wall exploded and a zombified piglin came bursting through. Whoa! I quickly pulled out my fire rod and lit him up. He lit on fire, but my fire Fire rod broke. Ouch, he's so strong. I swung with my sword as my health dropped, finally taking him out. As he disappeared, he dropped something. I picked huh? it up, a diamond hammer. This thing is powerful, and I'm getting it just in time, too. Excited about my new weapon, I headed back over to the diamonds and mined them out, being careful not to drop them in the lava. With the diamonds in hand, I put down a crafting table and made myself a pair of diamond leggings to replace my iron ones. Maybe we can make it through here after all. On day 75 to 78, I had finally reached a big, empty room. There was a chest on the other side. Hello? Looks like this place is deserted. I walked over to the chest when suddenly I heard a thump behind me. I turned around and saw a giant spider had dropped down from the ceiling. Oh, hey man, you mind if I grab what's in the chest and leave? You wish, buddy boy. You're not getting out of here alive. I thought you might say something like that. Just then, the spider leaped forward and attacked. I got hidden, but not before he started shooting his webs at me. Oh boy, this isn't going to be as easy as I was hoping. Looks like it's time to get my very own lucky rabbit foot. That's just a weird thing to say. The spider charged at me, but I was ready. I jumped out of the way, causing him to jump into the pool of lava. I'll keep my feet, thanks. Just then, I felt the energy surge through me, and I leveled up into a buff bunny man. Whoa, I have 10 hearts now, too. I went over to the chest and opened it. Inside were the lenses to the rad glasses, along with a bunch of diamonds. I can't wait to see what the Elder Rabbit can do with these. On day 79 to 84, I arrived at the Elder Rabbit's house. Sir, I've got everything you need to remake the rad glasses. Zozo, well done, well done. This is just what we needed. The Elder Rabbit quickly turned to his enchanting table and assembled the glasses, imbuing them with special power. He turned and tossed them back to me. Take these. And take courage. The hope of all bunny kind rests with you now. We know you can do it. Thank you. I'll give it everything I've got. I turned and left his house. Time to get ready for the final fight. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back at the base and saw the rabbit and Rocky had done a great job improving it. Nice job, you guys. This place looks amazing. Thanks, Zozo. We had a lot more creatures come and join us, so we had to build them all a place to stay. Aren't they scared? Yes, but they believe in you and know this is the safest place for them to be. I sure hope so. That reminds me, we better finish our special project. There could be more creatures out there. Rocky and I headed back out to our statue and got to work finishing it up. This carrot was going to be a beacon to all the animals in the area that this was a safe place. It didn't take long and we were soon finished. Now let's go get prepped. We've got some wolf butt to kick. On days 90 to 94, I was back in the base, putting together some diamond armor. I used the diamonds I had found in the dungeon, as well as some additional ones Rocky had found in the cave. I better go check the chest too. Rocky said he had some stuff for me in there. I opened the chest and saw it was full of healing potions. I grabbed them all and added them to my inventory. I'm feeling pretty stacked. Let's go wolf hunting. On days 95 to 96, I ran across the land in the direction of the wolf's base. It wasn't too long until I hit a river. The wolf's base was supposed to be further downstream, so I chopped down a nearby tree and built myself a boat. As I paddled down the river, I soon entered a dense jungle. It was wasn't too long until I came across my first wolf. Hey, leave that cat alone. I ran ashore and started swinging, saving the cat. Thank you. I thought I was a goner for sure. No problem. I'm just glad you're okay. You're so nice. Here, follow me. I saw something I think you'll find useful. Cat set off into the trees as I followed close behind. We soon reached a small stone building covered in cobwebs. I cut down the webs and opened the chest inside. A trident and a shield. You're right. These will help a ton. Thank you. Happy to help. I owe you after all. I invited the cat to stay at my base, to which he happily agreed. I decided to give the trident a test, sticking it into the nearby tree. This thing is awesome. It's definitely going to help in the fight. I headed back to my 
boat and kept rowing down the river. Suddenly, the crocodile from before popped out. This guy again. I thought I taught him a lesson the last time. The crocodile lunged at me, catching me in his jaws. Oh, let me go! I swung my sword as he kept trying to do damage to me. This guy was tough. Let's see how you like this. I took out my trident and threw it, spearing him into oblivion. Better luck next time, pal. On days 97 to 98, I was rowing down the river when I saw my stop up ahead. I jumped out of the boat and started climbing the mountain. The wolf's lair soon came into view. As I got closer, a couple of wolves attacked. Sorry guys, but you picked the wrong guy for a boss. By using my sword, trident, and shield, I managed to fend them off. I entered the mansion, and more wolves attacked. They were vicious, but they were no match for my new armor and weapons. One by one, I took them out. Let's see, where could this guy be? I'll check the basement. I headed down the stairs and saw a tarantula at the end of the hallway. Who charged? What's with this guy and spiders? The tarantula managed to stick me with a stinger, which poisoned me. It was doing damage, so I had to be quick. Luckily, I was able to take him out as the poison wore off. Let's try upstairs instead. I headed to the second floor as a couple of wolf guards came charging at me. I could tell these guys thought they were cool, but they couldn't get past my shield. Guess they weren't the smartest couple of doggos. I managed to take them both out. I was rounding one of the corners when a monkey came running up to me. Hey you! Oh hey! Wow, you sound just like me! That's because I am you. From the other video. Oh yeah! The video where I survived 100 days as a monkey. That's right! Yeah, I just wanted to stop by and tell people they should come watch my monkey adventure after they finish this one. I think they'll like it. I agree. That was a crazy adventure. Tell Chim Chim I say hi. I will! Good luck with the wolf. Thanks. Wow, what a nice guy. On day 99, I reached the top floor of the lair where the big bad wolf was sitting on his throne waiting for me. Well, 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 if it isn't the little bunny who cried wolf. You think you're so strong, but you attack bunnies who can't see you. You're a coward. Is that so? Now you're just making me angry, and I was already hungry. You won't like me when I'm hangry. The wolf leaped forward and attacked. He was strong, but I was ready. He got a few bites in, but I landed some blows of my own. I could tell he wasn't expecting me to be so strong. Let's see how you like this. The wolf started summoning in some smaller wolves, who I was able to easily outmaneuver and defeat. Then I hit the wolf with my sword, causing him to retreat. Still a coward, hiding behind others to fight for you, I see. I'm not a coward. I'm just powerful. Enough games. This ends now. Suddenly, the wolf disappeared and started to attack me. And now you're cloaking? You're just proving me right. The wolf reappeared on his throne. Who cares? You'll be gone soon. No one can stop me when I use my powers. I quickly grabbed my red glasses and put them on. The wolf used his cloaking power again, but I could still see him. What? How did you hit me? Not so invisible after all, are you? How dare you? The wolf let out a flurry of attacks, which caught me off guard, nearly taking all of my health. Maybe I was being a little too cocky. He only had to hit me one more time, and I was done for. Zozo! I looked over and saw Rocky standing by the stairs. Catch! He threw a splash potion at me, which immediately restored all of my health. No! I pulled out my trident and threw it at the wolf, destroying him for good. Rocky, I can't believe you followed me here. I'm glad you did, though. You saved the day. But our work here isn't done yet. On day 100, I headed down into the basement and used my hammer to break the animals out of their cages. Be free, my friends. It's safe now. After I had broken all of the animals out, I stood by the door of the mansion as the creatures ran to freedom. Sometime later, I was back at my base, surrounded by all my new friends. Thanks for all of your help, and I'll catch you in my next adventure. On day one, I spawned in as a little mouse. Ooh, look how cute and tiny I am. But uh-oh, I only have one heart. I've got to be careful. That's when I noticed that my hunger bar was half the size of a normal one, too. Uh-oh, I guess I have a tiny stomach. I better hurry and start getting some supplies. Right away, I started punching trees so that I could get some wood. Using the wood I had collected, I put together a crafting table, then used that to make a wooden pickaxe, shovel, axe, and sword. I packed up my crafting table and started to look for some food. That's when my hunger bar started dropping. I had to hurry. I soon saw a patch of berries. Oh, thank goodness. This is just what I was looking for. Suddenly, I heard a growl, and a giant grizzly bear came walking over. Oh, he's going to eat me. I gotta run. I ran and ran through the forest until I felt like I had gotten away. This forest was a dangerous place. Just then, I heard some squeaking up ahead. I soon saw a little mice family. Oh, hey, guys. You're just like me. Is it okay if we stick together? A new friend. Yeah, absolutely. Everything is easier when you stick together. My name is Remy. Remy introduced me to the rest of his family. It was nice to have a group of friendly faces. He told me that they had a nice cave to live in, too. We headed over to the cave when suddenly a fox popped out and started to attack us. Oh no, I have to help my new family. Together, we did everything we could to fight off the fox. Luckily for me, our combined power was strong and we took the fox down. Yeah, you won't be messing with us again. We then all went into the cave. It was small but cozy. The perfect place to settle for the night. I just hoped that tomorrow I could find some more food. Otherwise, I'm in big trouble. On day two, I headed into the cave to get some coal. I was able to quickly find some and mined it out. I also grabbed some stone. Time for this mouse to get an upgrade. I put down my crafting table and used it to put together some stone tools. I also made 
made some torches. I headed over to our cave and set up the torches. This should help keep the mobs away. My hunger was starting to drop again, so I decided to go out and look for some more food. As I ran through the forest, I could see something on the ground. But as I got closer, I could see it was just a flower. Man, where is all the food? I didn't have too much time to think about it though, as the grizzly bear from before showed up again. Oh, this guy again? I can't risk it with one heart. I had stone tools, but there was no way I could take him on. I soon arrived back at the cave to talk to my mouse friends. Have you guys been able to find any food? Everywhere I look is either empty or has a hungry bear. Oh, you're not alone. We can't find anything either. But that's because of the humans. The humans? What do you mean? There's been a lot of humans coming through here, and they've been taking all of the food. It's been hard for us to find anything. I felt really bad for them, and they agreed to try and go look for food. I wanted to do something to make them happy, so I went outside and gathered up some of the materials. Using everything I had collected, I started to fix up the cave. We might not have any food, but at least we could have some beds to sleep in. It's the best I could do, but I just wanted to say thank you for letting me stay here. I'm really starting to feel like I'm part of your family. On day three, I woke up to a loud noise. There was a human in our cave. He had put my mouse family into bags, and I was next. Let them go. I had tried to hit him, but he nearly took me out. I had no choice but to run. You can run, but I'm gonna find you eventually. I kept running until the human was far behind me. What was I going to do now? How could this happen to my family? That guy was huge. But one day, I'm gonna be big and strong too. Mark my words. I'm gonna save my family from the humans. On days four to five, I set off to find myself a new place to live. If I was going to get big and strong, I needed a safe place to sleep at night and store my gear. I soon found myself a nice cliffside and dug into the side of it. I wanted something cozy like the last cave, but I was gonna make it a little nicer. Time to get some building supplies. I headed out into the forest and gathered wood, as well as all the other materials I was going to need. This was going to be a classy rat's nest. I then got to work building all of the rooms. I decided to build something even bigger than what I needed, including rooms for other mice. I was determined to save my mouse family, and they were going to need a room when they came to live with me. Soon, the base was completed, and I decided to get some rest. In the middle of the night, I heard some noise outside. Uh-oh, I forgot to put out torches. I gotta take care of these zombies. I got right to work, fighting off the zombies, but I had to be careful, because I still only had one heart. Luckily for me, I was able to survive and took them all out. I better get those torches up quick. The next day, I headed outside to take a look around the area. What is that over there? I went down into the forest and soon came upon a small, half-built structure. Inside was another mouse. Hey, you're just like me. Am I? Because I'm looking real buff while you're just a skinny little guy. I'm not a mouse. I'm a vole. What are you doing out here? My family was kidnapped by the humans, and I'm going to rescue them, but I'm worried about getting food first. Boy, are you right about that. How am I supposed to keep to my all-protein diet with those humans taking all the food? They also got my family, too. I think they're keeping them as pets. Oh, these humans are ruining everything. Let's team up and take them down. Yeah, let's do it. Two more voles had popped up from nearby. Whoa, where did you guys come from? I thought you were the only one. Oh, yeah. These are my brothers. They're around. What's up, little guy? You look like you could use a protein shake. Uh, thanks. Well, the more the merrier, I suppose. Come on, you guys should live at my base with me. Tomorrow, we can figure out the food. The voles agreed, and we headed out. On day six to eight, I was wandering through the forest when I finally came across a berry bush, but it was empty. That's when I saw a raccoon taking off the last few berries. Oh, hey, would you mind sparing a few berries? I haven't eaten in days. Heh, <laughs> that's just how it works out here, bud. Do I have enough to spare? Yeah, I do, but I guess I'm just a jerk. Sorry, not sorry. I couldn't believe this guy. Well, you're right about one thing. You are a jerk. I had had enough. It was time to start fighting back. Give me those berries. I jumped into action and started fighting the raccoon. I caught him off guard. He didn't expect a little mouse like me to be this this strong, I managed to beat him in no time. As he disappeared, he dropped a bunch of berries. Finally, some food. I took a bite of the berries when I suddenly felt my strength begin to grow and I leveled up. I had gotten even stronger and now I have four hearts. Awesome. With my belly more full than before, I decided to head into a cave. Lucky for me, I found a whole bunch of iron. By using my pickaxe, I managed to mine a whole bunch of iron, enough to make myself all kinds of iron equipment. As I headed back toward the base, I also came across some sugarcane, even more food. Today is just my lucky day. I managed to collect a decent amount of sugarcane when suddenly the grizzly bear appeared again. I'm not running away this time. I jumped into action, but it was a mistake. This bear was just way too strong. Okay, looks like I'm running away this time. Today was just not the day to beat a bear, but hey, at least I got some food. Back at the base, I started planting the sugar cane. If I could get some more ingredients, I'd have myself a nice food source. I can also use it to make books. I was hoping to build a library in the base. Once the sugar cane was all planted, I went back to my base and started smelting the iron ore I'd collected. With the iron ingots, I made myself a full set of iron armor, then made all of the tools I would need as well. I'm feeling much better already. Ready. I then decided to upgrade the base by adding in a library. I felt like the voles might like it. I just wanted to make sure they were comfortable and happy to be here. Hey guys, come check out the new library. The voles headed upstairs to take a look around. Reading is for nerds. But even I gotta admit, this is a pretty nice looking place. Good going, Pipsqueak. On days 9 to 10, I woke up to the voles coming into my room. Bro, we're starving. We gotta do something about this food situation. Good morning. I agree, but I feel like I've run out of places to look. There is this one place, but only someone small and sneaky could go there. 
like you. I could give it a go. Where is it? There's a human farm near here, just full of stuff. If you can get in there and steal some of their food, we could start our own farm. That sounds a little risky, but at this point, I'm not sure what choice I have. I'll do it. The voles told me where I needed to go, and I went and waited outside for nighttime. Once it was good and dark, I snuck down and soon saw the farm. These humans have so much food. Why are they taking everything from the forest? I quickly gathered as much food as I could. We were finally going to have a reliable food source. Once I had grabbed a good amount of food, I noticed a chest nearby. Inside was a box of hats. I wonder what this is all about. Just then I heard a bark and a dog came running over to me. Hey, why are you barking at me? Don't you know the humans are taking everyone's food? The dog stopped barking. They're taking everyone's food? He's my best friend, but that doesn't seem like a very nice thing to do. Suddenly I heard a shout and the farmer came running out. Hey you, get on out of here. I had no choice but to run away. Those humans were dangerous and I would never rescue my family if they captured me too. After a bit of running, I made it back to my base. I threw some potatoes into the furnace and started making some beetroot soup. I also baked some bread. With all kinds of good food in my pockets, I headed over to the vole's room. I'm back and look what I've got. I started tossing the food out, much to the vole's delight. We'd never have to be hungry again. After everyone had eaten, I showed them the hat box too. Everyone picked out their favorite hats and put them on. We were all pretty excited about it. The next day, I went outside and started working on a farm. Once it was all set up, I tilled the land and planted all the different plants. Finally, I could focus on my main mission of rescuing my family. On days 11 to 12, I woke up to the voles coming into my room again, but this time they weren't complaining. They were excited because they had something to show me. Apparently it was a fancy statue. I went outside to take a look. So what do you think? We all worked really hard on it. It's a mouse, just like you. Wow, guys, that is really nice. Thanks for making this for me. You know what could be really fun? What's that? Why don't we make one together? There's more than one of us here, so I think it just makes sense for there to be more than one statue. Yeah, that sounds dope, but we don't really want to build another one, so you can make it. We can't wait to see it. First off, I decided to go out and start collecting all the flowers I would need to make dye. I was going to find some sheep later, so I ran around getting everything I would need. Once I had gotten all the flowers I needed, I snuck back to the human's farm. I snuck upstairs and managed to grab some shears out of the chest. Then I went over to the sheep and dyed them all the different colors I would need. I had just collected a decent amount of wool when the farmer and dog came running out. Uh-oh, here they come again. I've got a bolt. The farmer shouted and the dog barked, but I was able to get out of there just in time. Back at the base, I got to work building the first part of the statue. It meant a lot to me that the voles had made me a statue, so I thought it'd be nice to make something too. I still needed some more supplies, so I stopped at the first part. On days 13 to 15, I was out exploring the woods when I came across a beehive. Oh, we could use some honey. This will be very helpful. I gathered it up and then saw another one, so I gathered the honey from there too. That's when I noticed a small house on top of the hill. A house that small must be for a mouse. I ran up the hill to find out. The door opened and inside was a feeble old mouse. Why, hello, dear. What brings you out to these parts? Hi, I'm out gathering some supplies for my friends. I've got to search pretty far for special items since the humans are taking all of our resources. Ah, those pesky humans. They're just the worst. It's high time the Mouse of Myth comes along. The Mouse of Myth? Who's that? Oh, have you not heard the story? Legend says that when the humans begin to ruin the mouse lands, a brave and mighty mouse will rise up, growing to be even bigger and stronger than the humans. That mouse will save all mouse kind. Really? Wow, that actually sounds a lot like the situation I'm going through right now. Perhaps you are the Mouse of Myth then. Ever experienced sudden bursts of strength? Once, but I think that was because I hadn't eaten in a few days. The Mouse of Myth sounds way stronger than me. Well, the Mouse of Myth will be confident in himself, so perhaps it's not you after all. Oh yeah, uh, maybe not. We chatted a while longer, but all I could think about was the Mouse of Myth. I hoped that could be me, but maybe she was right. I didn't feel confident in it at all. I soon left to go back to my base. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to the voles coming into my room again. Yo, Zozo, you've been proven to be pretty tough after all, so we had a favor to ask. What's going on? Some of our buddies got themselves into a bit of a situation, and we were hoping you could bail them out. I'll see what I can do. Show me the way. I followed the voles out of the base and out across the land. They had soon led me into a dense jungle where we came across some squirrels stuck in a tree. There was a Tasmanian devil down at the bottom, and he wasn't letting them down. Out of the way, mister. I charged at the Tasmanian devil, and we started to fight. Why won't you leave those poor squirrels alone? The voles cheered me on as we continued to fight. This little guy was intense, but I was quick and took him out in no time. Bro, nice one. The vole called up to his squirrel friends to let them know it was safe, and they came down to chat. Yo, that was sick! We thought we were never gonna get out of that tree! No worries, guys. I'm just glad we could help. Say, 
if you want, you should come live at our base with us. There's a lot of dangerous creatures out here. Gnarly, bruh. We'd love to live there with you guys. Just then, I felt strength coming to me, and I grew in size. And I've gained even more hearts than before. Dude, nice gains. I didn't know a mouse could beef up like that. Soon we all left and headed back to the base. I had grown in size again. Maybe I could be the mouse of myth. I'd have to figure that out another day. Back at the base, I got right to work building the squirrels a place to live. I started with some steps and a ladder, then got to work making them a tree house. I figured they would be happiest living in a tree, so I made it the best I could. Then I filled the inside with all the comforts they could need. Soon, I was done. I really hope they like it here. On days 20 to 22, I got woken up again, but this time, it wasn't by the voles. What is that sound? I ran outside and saw the base was surrounded by zombies. But where had all of the torches gone? I couldn't worry about that now, though. I had some zombies to take care of. I ran down the hill and quickly attacked them. They weren't super tough, so I was able to defeat them quickly. Alright, I gotta figure out what happened. But just then, another group of zombies came over the hill. More of them? Oh, brother. I started swinging my sword and was able to take a few more of them out. But how many more were there going to be? I don't know if I can fight them off forever. It was close, but I I managed to finish them off. Okay, enough of that. I better get more torches. But then, even more zombies came over the hill, and this time, they were covered in iron armor. What is going on? I kept swinging my sword and was getting hits in, but these guys were way tougher with their armor. It was starting to look a little close, but I finally fought them all off. Oh, I can't fight anymore. Hopefully that's it. But it wasn't it. More iron-wearing zombies came over the hill, and this time, they had skeletons with them. Uh-oh, I don't think I can survive this. I started to fight them off, but it was too hard. I ran under the statue for cover, but I was surrounded. Just then, the voles came charging out of the base and attacked the zombies. Hang on, Zozo. We're here to hell. With our combined power, we were able to start fighting back and start taking out the bad guys. Even the squirrels got into the fight. At long last, the zombies were finally defeated. This time, no more zombies or skeletons came over the hill. Soon, we were back in the base. Thanks, guys. I thought I was a goner. We thought we ought to help you out for once. I'm sure glad you did. We've got to figure out what happened to our torches, though. Otherwise, we'll be in big trouble. Oh, right. We might know something about that. The voles explained that they had taken all of the torches and put them in the library. Apparently it was too dark for them to see what they were reading. It turns out reading is actually pretty dope, but we didn't think about the zombies. My bad, homie. I told them it was okay and got to work setting up some new torches outside. We'll have to try and make even better defenses tomorrow. On days 23 to 26, I left my base to go and gather some more supplies. Our base had nearly been taken over last night and we needed some serious upgrades. First, I dug up a bunch of clay. I was going to make bricks, so I needed to grab as much clay as I could. I then brought it back to my base, where I began smelting it into bricks. Before I started working on the wall, though, I decided to build a nice walkway down to the farm. It was going to be much better than having to get wet every time we needed to get a bite to eat. With the new bridge complete, I then got to work on the new walls. There were some natural mountains around the entrance to our base, but I thought it'd be smart to plug up the gaps with some walls. After all, a wall is no good if someone can just walk right through it. Once the walls are finished, my next project was building a guard tower. If we had something nice and tall, we'd be able to keep a close eye out for any more zombies, or even worse, humans. It took a bit, but the tower was soon complete, too. As I was admiring the build from the courtyard, one of the squirrels came outside to meet me. Hey, man, nice building. You're really good at this. Thanks. I just want us to be as safe as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm actually a pretty good cook. If you wouldn't mind building me a kitchen, I'd be happy to make food for everyone. Oh, that's a great idea. Before I started on the kitchen, though, I first grabbed some food from the farm. There was no point in building a kitchen if there's no food to store in it. With all the food in my pockets, I headed inside and got to work on the kitchen. I made sure to set up everything he needed and filled the pantry with all of the food. I couldn't wait to see what he'd make. Later that night, I was up in the tower to see how well our defenses worked. I could see a big group of zombies outside of the gate, but they had no chance of getting in. I'd call that a success. Now I just had to hope nothing bigger would stop by. On days 27 to 31, I was keeping watch from the tower when the bear from earlier showed up. This guy again? I'm so sick of him always trying to ruin my day. I ran down and headed outside the gate. You've tried to take my food too many times. I'm not letting you in here. The bear just laughed and let out a roar. He wasn't much of the talking type, but he was still a jerk. Just then, he charged. The bear was still really strong, but this time, I wasn't going to run away or back down. I was stronger, and he was going to have the fight of his life. With my sword in hand, I swung as hard as I could, knocking him back. He let out a roar, but it was too late. I hit him with the final blow, and he was defeated. Well, aren't you just the toughest little mouse I've ever seen? I looked up at a nearby tree and saw a crane looking down at me. Oh man, you have no idea. That bear has been trying to finish me off for days. I just couldn't let him win. Well, it's not every day you see a mouse beating a bear. Have you ever considered joining a fighting league? All of the toughest animals around are in ours, and you'd be Perfect. Oh, I appreciate the offer, but I can't. I'm on a quest to save my family, not become the ultimate mouse champion. Oh, but you don't understand. This will help you. By showing your bravery, 
you can inspire the crowd who want to help in your cause. Not to mention you can earn some serious money by winning fights. Money that could help you. Uh, okay. I guess there's no harm in checking it out. Where do I need to go? The crane told me where to go, and I said I would head over there after preparing a little bit. He thanked me and took off. Later that day, I was deep in a cave, looking for resources. If I was going to win any fights, I needed the best gear I could get. That's when I noticed there were tons of diamonds in this cave. I mined out as many as I could. This was just what I needed. With my pockets overflowing with diamonds, I headed out of the cave. Back at the base, I got right to crafting, making myself a full set of diamond armor, a helmet, boots, leggings, and a chest plate. I then used them to make a pickaxe, shovel, axe, and sword. There's no way I'm gonna lose any fights now. On days 32 to 35, I made my way to the location the crane had told me about. Standing outside the entrance was the crane. Good evening, sir. I'm so thrilled you could make it. You've got quite the challenger tonight, but I think you will do splendidly. Okay, I'm all ready to fight, so bring it on. The crane motioned for me to enter, and I headed in. The arena was brightly lit, or at least the fighting area was. I could hear a crowd in the darkness, though, so I knew the place was packed. As I stood in the arena, I saw a gate open at the other end. It looked like my challenger was a Shiba Inu. I could take this guy. A bell rang, and the fight was on. The Shiba was tough, but so was I. As we fought, the crowd cheered. As we both landed blows, they oohed and awed. They seemed like they were really into it. If I can win this fight, all the animals watching will be able to help me rescue my family. I've got to win. The Shiba Inu put up a good fight, but with my new weapons and armor, there was really no contest. I soon defeated him, and the crowd went wild. As they cheered, a bunch of emeralds started dropping into the arena, as well as XP points. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these emeralds, but I'm sure I can figure something out. This is awesome. Just then, a bunch of lapis and obsidian dropped in as well. Excited, I ran around picking up my rewards as the crowd continued to cheer. I gave one final wave to the crowd, then headed back down and out of the arena to meet with the crane. Congratulations. I just knew you could win. Thanks. That was actually a lot of fun. I think all the animals were really excited for me too. Oh yes, the crowd loved you. Please, feel free to come back soon. I'm sure the crowd is very inspired by you. I thanked the crane for inviting me and ran back toward my base. I made a stop by the sheep farm first though and grabbed a bunch of dyed wool. I was going to need this for the statue. Back at the base, I took the wool I had collected and got to work on the next part. I kept going until I ran out of wool again. I couldn't wait to see what it would look like when I was done. On days 36 to 39, I was exploring a nearby acacia forest when I saw something strange in the distance. Is that a mouse? She's really beating that wolf up. The mouse soon defeated the wolf and I hurried over to talk to her. Whoa, nice moves. That was super impressive. Thanks. I thought I was the only big strong mouse out here, but I see I'm not the only one. My name is Bella. My name's Zozo. There's actually a whole group of us living just back over the mountains. You should come live at our base with us. Are you sure? I don't want to intrude. Oh no, it would be great. We could train together and everything. I feel like I could learn a lot from you. Well, all right. Show me the way. We headed off back in the direction of the base. Once we arrived, I got right to work making her room. It was going to be awesome having such a tough mouse around. Soon, her room was complete. On days 40 to 43, I met Bella in the kitchen. Hey Zozo, I'm going to go out and train. Do you want to come with? That would be awesome. You can teach me all of your moves. Right on. Just give me a second. Bella went over to the crafting table and made herself a new purple hat. It was really cool. She was then ready to go, so we headed out. Back in the acacia forest, I watched as Bella took on a whole pack of wolves. I couldn't believe she wasn't even scared. The wolves were fighting their hardest, but Bella wasn't even breaking a sweat. Soon, she had defeated all of the wolves. Zozo, why don't you hop in on this next one? Another pack of wolves charged at us, and I hopped in. I've got a tip for you. Instead of just hitting, jump into the air and hit them as you're coming down. You'll do even more damage than normal. I gave it a try and she was right. I tried it on as many wolves as I could and together we defeated them all no problem. Later we were taking a break when I had a question to ask her. So how come you train so hard? What makes you want to fight so much? That's a good question. I wasn't always like this, but one day I met an old mouse woman in the middle of nowhere. She told me this story about a mouse who could grow in size and was really strong. I had been fighting mobs just before then and had grown in size a little myself. That was when I realized I had to be the one in the legend. I had to be the mouse of myth. Really? I think I met the same mouse. I heard the exact same story. I couldn't believe that I might be the mouse of myth, though. Well, that makes sense, though, because you're not. I knew without a doubt the legend was about me, and so I've dedicated myself to training in order to fulfill my destiny. You really thought you were the mouse of myth? <laughs> That's cute. Come on, I'll race you back to the base. Bella took off, but I couldn't help feeling a little disappointed. I mean, she was really talented, so it did make sense, but I was really starting to believe I might be the mouse of myth. We'd just have to see how everything played out. On days 44 to 49, I decided to get some more work done on the statue. I had collected a decent amount of materials for my last raid, so I got quite a bit done. I was even able to do the tail, which I thought turned out pretty good. I was taking a moment to look at how things had gone so far, when the voles came running out. Zozo, come quick. There's a human at the gate, and he's asking for you. A human? You guys keep an eye out from above. This could mean trouble. 
trouble. I ran over to the gates and sure enough, there was a human on the other side. But this human was dressed like a mailman. What do you want, human? Don't you worry, little rat. I'm not here to cause you any trouble, yet. I'm here with a message from all of us humans. What could you thugs have to say to me? We wrote it all down, but watch out. We know about your little base out here. We've seen you and your friends training too. We could destroy all of you if we wanted to, but we'll let it slide on one condition. Yeah? And what's that? Stop messing with our farms and stealing from us. Otherwise, you and all your little rodents can say goodbye. Okay, I'll agree to that on one condition. You let my mouse family and all other animals go. <laughs> they didn't tell me you had a sense of humor, but seriously, knock it off or we'll knock you out. The human turned and walked off. Who do these humans think they are? It's time to teach them a real lesson. On days 50 to 53, Bella and I snuck up to the sheep farm I had been visiting, but this time I saw they had built a huge wall around it. Looks like we inspired them to up their security, but I think I know how to beat that. Bella pulled out her shovel. Shovel? Shovel. Bella and I got right to work building a tunnel. I had been here enough times to know just where I needed to go to pop out under the sheep pen. We tunneled our way through and popped up right underneath them. Holy sheep, where did you two come from? Oh, I didn't know you guys could talk. Uh, sorry for dyeing you different colors and stealing your wool. Are you serious? You're the only one who has been cutting our wool, and it's hot out here. You're doing us a favor. Oh, well that's great to hear. You guys wouldn't happen to want to live in my base, would you? We thought you'd never ask. The humans are the worst. We all jumped into the tunnel and ran back out from under the wall. This was going to make the humans so mad, it was perfect. Back at the base, I got right to work building the sheep a nice farmhouse to live in. They didn't even have a roof over their heads before. This was going to be much better. Now we just needed to sit back and see how the humans would react. On days 54 to 57, I was down in the mines gathering some more materials. The humans would probably want to attack me at some point, so I needed to make some upgrades. Once I had collected everything I needed in the mines, I headed upstairs and went over to the crafting table. Using the obsidian I had gotten from the arena, I managed to put together an enchanting table. Time to really upgrade my gear. I went into the library and cleared out a space for the enchanting table. I surrounded the room with bookshelves and placed the table at the center of the room. Then I went through all of my gear and gave them different enchantments to make them stronger. I'm gonna be one tough mouse to beat now. I then went outside and got to work on the next part of the statue. This time it was all about the details, starting with a torch in its left hand. Then I got to work on a sword for the right hand. This was my favorite part of the build for sure. This statue is looking great. On days 58 to 62, I decided to make some more improvements to the base, starting with the bridge. I took down some of what I had done before, then began adding in some new railings and overhangs. As a final touch, I added in some hanging lanterns. Speaking of lanterns, I thought they looked quite a bit nicer than torches, so I went around the base and replaced all the torches with lanterns. I also added a doorbell. The least any invading human can do is ring the bell first. I then headed inside and cleared out a wall and added a window. Inside, I put some cushions and bookshelves to make a sitting room. The voles were really getting into their books, so I thought they'd enjoy the space. Later that evening, I was lounging in the sitting room with Bella. I've just got to tell you, Zozo, you're a really great friend. To me, the voles, everyone you meet. And plus, this base looks amazing. Thanks, Bella. That means a lot coming from you. On day 63 to 66, I heard someone ringing the doorbell and went out to take a look. Perched outside was the crane. Good morning, sir. It would seem your next challenger is ready. He'll be even tougher than before, but the crowd has been begging to see you in action again. I think you really made an impression on them. Okay, great. I'll be there. Later on, I was back at the arena. The gate opened and I stepped into the ring. The crowd was still in darkness, but they sounded excited to see me. Across the arena, I saw a honey badger had stepped in to face me. We squared off, and as soon as the bell was rung, we leapt into action. The crane was right. This honey badger was way stronger than my last fight, and his claws were really hurting. Sorry, but I've got a family to fight for. I thought about everything Bella had told me about and tried to put it into action. Once I started landing the more powerful blows, I could tell it was only a matter of time. Soon, the badger was defeated. The crowd went wild. I did it! Like before, emerald started to drop from the ceiling, followed by some lapis, netherite ingots, and health potions. There was also a mythical potion, which said it could only be used by a mythical hero. Huh, I wonder what this is about. It's supposed to taste like bananas, too. I bet a monkey of legend would be into this. Just then, I noticed there were two small honey badgers crying on the other side of one of the gates. Hey, uh, that wasn't your dad, was it? No, our real dad was taken away by humans long ago. But that badger you just fought had agreed to take us in. He just needed to win the fight to get the resources to take care of us. Oh, wow, I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea he was also fighting for her family. It's okay, he knew the risks. We know that you're just trying to rescue your family from the humans, too. We're just tired of them ruining all of our lives. You know what? Why don't you two come live in my base with me? There's all kinds of animals there who would love to be your family. Wow, that would be amazing. The two little badgers followed me back to our base. They were excited to finally have a place to call home. I went ahead and dug out a room for them to stay, too. Who knows how long these two little guys had been looking for a home. On day 67 to 70, I headed out of the base. Things were really starting to come along. Where is everyone? I walked out and saw the voles were outside harvesting some wheat, but Bella was out there giving them commands. What is she doing? I headed down to talk to her. Hey, what are you doing? Telling everyone what to do. Oh, hey, 
Hey, Zozo. I figured that since I was the mouse of myth, I should probably be the one calling the shots around here. I don't really know why you keep saying you're the mouse of myth. There's not really any proof. For all you know, it's me. Oh, yeah? Well, if you were the mouse of myth, you'd already have the Frost Slayer sword. The what? Yeah, see? You don't even know what it is. Part of the legend is that the mouse of myth is able to get it from the great northern tundra. Well, you don't have it either. In fact, I'm going to get it right now. Oh, yeah? Not if I get it first. Bella and I took off for the great northern tundra. I would show her. We soon arrived, and boy, was it cold. We were both so worried about getting there first, we ran right into a pack of polar bears. Uh-oh. We both fought hard to stay alive, but it was clear we couldn't fight them off fighting on our own. We changed our strategy and saw that by working together, we were able to take them all out. Ah, oh, Bella, what are we doing? We're going to get ourselves into some serious trouble if we don't work together. You're right. We're being really hasty. How about this? We both work together to get the sword. Once we get there, we can just see who the sword chooses. It's not really up to us who the Mouse of Myth is, anyway. Exactly. Alright, let's go get that sword. On day 71 to 74, Bella and I continued deeper into the tundra. As we traveled through the ice spikes, we soon came across a dungeon. This must be the place. No matter what happens, we'll still be friends. Deal? Deal. Bella and I ran down the stairs and into the dungeon. It's full of water. How are we going to get through? Just then, we noticed some levers at the top of the stairs. These must control the platforms down there. Here, you go down and I'll work these levers. I ran down by the water as Bella started flipping switches. After hitting the first one, a platform came out of the wall. I jumped over to it. Bella continued hitting the switches and more platforms came out of the wall. I had some close calls jumping between them, but eventually I made it to the next passageway. Hang on a second. There's a lever in here. Let me hit it and see what it does. I flipped the switch and a shortcut opened up for Bella. She hopped down. Nice hopping. Let's see what else is in here. We kept going down the hallway when suddenly a bunch of poison snowballs came flying out of the wall, hitting us. Ouch, those really hurt. There was a small passageway, so we ducked through there to heal up. Zozo, I have to be honest with you. What is it? I know I'm really confident all the time, but the truth is I'm not sure if I'm actually the mouse of myth. The old mouse woman had just told me a story so specific, I felt like it had to be me. Yeah, it was the same thing for me. But you know what we haven't considered yet? What's that? Maybe she was just making the whole thing up to trick mice like us to take on the humans. You know what? You're probably right. As if we didn't have enough reason to want to fight them. I guess we'll find out soon enough anyway. I agreed. That's when I noticed something odd about the box we were next to. Hey, is there something in this? We looked inside and saw there was a fancy new helmet inside. My diamond helmet was still in good shape, so I let Bella take it. We decided to keep pushing on and ran out into the snowballs. We took some hits, but made it through. We soon entered a big room that was full of bad guys. We sprang into action, fighting them off. Some of them cast magic spells that dropped explosive ice blocks on us. They were really tough, but nothing could break the power of our friendship. We quickly cleared the room. I think this might be the last room up ahead. Let's finish this together. On day 75 to 78, we stepped into a large room where a snow troll was standing in the center of the room. But look what he was standing in front of. The frost lair. I can see it. Let's get that troll out of our way. Bella and I sprinted in, swinging our weapons as hard as we could. This guy was unbelievably strong. His blows did a lot of damage, and no matter how hard we hit him, it seemed like he wasn't even hurt. This guy is crazy. I don't know if we can beat him. Our health was dropping fast, too. Maybe neither of us was the Mouse of Myth, and it was all going to end here. But just then, I had an idea. Bella, follow my lead. Hey, Doug. Dum Dum, over here! We took off running, and he followed us over by one of the support pillars. He swung his stone column at me, but I jumped out of the way, causing him to hit the support pillar. There was a crack, and suddenly, the whole pillar fell over, smashing the troll. Zozo, that was brilliant. Go on, you can grab the sword first. I stepped up and took a hold of the sword. Suddenly, nothing happened. It was just a normal sword. There's nothing special about this sword. Here, I tossed the sword over to Bella, who picked it up. You're right. This is just like holding any other sword. That legend must not be true. Otherwise, only one of us could have held this. True, or maybe it's just about anyone. No one is born the Mouse of Myth. You become it by trying. Suddenly, there was a rumbling sound, and the roof started to cave in. Without the support column, we were all in danger. We ran as fast as we could and made it out of the room, just in time. On day 79 to 84, we had made it back to the base and settled back in for the night. The next day, I had a lot of work to do. I started by doubling the size of our farm so everyone would have plenty to eat. Then I got busy putting in a path around it. This was going to be much easier to navigate. Then I went over and put together an archery range for the squirrels. They had been really helpful when the zombies had attacked, so I wanted to give them an even better training ground. Nice shooting, guys. If humans show up here, they aren't going to know what hit them. The Volts had also mentioned to me how they were reading all about gardening and wanted to try their hand at maintaining a garden. So I put in a small garden for them to manage as well. Yeah, we better get the pruners out. These roses are already looking a little wild. And keep a close eye on those poppies. I'd hate to see them fall to the weeds. With so many animals around, the outdoors were starting to get a little untidy, so I made a small storage shack for us to stash all of our odds and ends. Part of these improvements was also getting a better space for us to improve our weapons and armor, so I built a smithy area for us to do everything we needed to do. I thought it turned out pretty nice. With the new smithy, I took some time to fix up all of my diamond gear, as Bella fired up the blast furnace to make improvements to her equipment, too. Then I headed inside to the smithing table, where I used all of the netherite 
I had won in the arena to upgrade my diamond gear to netherite. Then I brought the new gear over to the enchanting table where I enchanted all of my netherite equipment. I'm going to be one unstoppable mouse now. And finally, our last project was upgrading our walls, which the voles offered to help with. At this point, our humble little rat base was becoming a full on castle. We gave the walls major upgrades and even built a large tower. On days 85 to 89, the vole came running into my room with a warning. Zozo, the humans are outside the walls. Come quickly. I hurried and ran to the walls and could see a small army of humans were preparing to charge, but the squirrels were in position and ready to fire. Hold steady, guys. Here they come. The humans began to charge as the squirrels unleashed their arrows. Their training had paid off, and they were deadly shots. Several humans fell as they ran toward the base. It's working. The humans had lost many of their soldiers and started to run away. Yeah, nice job, everyone. They aren't tough at all. What I didn't realize was that this was just a decoy. A powerful warrior had scaled the mountain behind us and jumped into our base. What was that? I turned and saw a warrior standing in the courtyard. He said nothing as he stared up at me. Charge! I leapt into action, swinging my sword. But if there was anything I had learned, it was that friends are stronger together. Bella came running out of the base, followed by the voles. The squirrel started shooting arrows down as well. Even with our combined power, though, it was quite the fight. Keep going, everyone. We can defeat this guy. The warrior was strong, and his armor was hard to crack. Eventually, we managed to knock him over the cliff as he landed in the water. We kept on him, and I swung my new frost slayer sword with all my might. At long last, he was finally defeated. We did it. The humans will never take our land, and they certainly won't take our freedom. Suddenly, I felt strength coming into me, and I leveled up, gaining eight more hearts. We will never be conquered. On days 90 to 94, I ran into Bella in the lobby, but she looked really sad. Bella, what's wrong? I thought you'd be excited after our successful fight. I am excited about our win, but I'm just really down about this Mouse of Myth stuff. I mean, I dedicated my entire life believing I was fulfilling my destiny, but it's looking more like it was all a lie. You know what? I think we should go talk to that old mouse woman. Even if it's all a lie, you can at least be at peace knowing the truth. Bella agreed and we headed out. We soon arrived back at the old woman's house. I told Bella to stay back while I knocked on the door. As the old woman came out, she was excited to see me. Oh, look who it is. Could it be our very own mouse of myth? Cut it, lady. We came here to find out the truth. We? Just then, Bella jumped up, which caught the old woman by surprise. We? Why did you tell both of us the same legend? Is there a mouse of myth or not? Oh, uh, I, yes. Er, no. I, uh, okay, okay. The truth. The truth is that I made it all up. Why would you do that? That lie nearly destroyed our friendship. Oh, I'm sorry. I never would have wanted that. The humans have been messing with mice for decades, and no one ever seemed brave enough to stand up to them. I just thought if I made up a story, I might be able to inspire someone to actually do it. They took my family years ago, and I've always wanted revenge. Well, I suppose there are worse things to lie about. We do want to teach them a lesson, and are actually strong enough to do something about it after all. Bella agreed, and we had a nice chat with the old woman about her family. She sounded lonely living out here, so I invited her to stay at the base with us. She agreed, but on one condition. We had to rebuild her house exactly the same. I took some time to take down her house so that we'd have all the right pieces. Then later, back at the base, I reconstructed it so it would be exactly how it was before. She was delighted to have a familiar but safe place to stay. On days 95 to 97, I walked out of the base to see the crane waiting for me. Oh, good morning again, sir. I know you've got your hands full, but your next challenger is ready for you. The crowd has said that they wish to see you fight once more. I'm sure they will make it worth your while. Well, one more round of upgrades before we fight the humans would be nice. Okay, I'll do it. The crane nodded before flying up and away. Later that day, I arrived back at the arena entrance, ready for my fight. I entered in and headed back into the arena. As the gate opened on the other side, I was shocked to see who it was. Bella, what are you doing here? It's okay, Zozo. We don't have to fight to the death. I've been doing these fights too so that I can train. Come on, it'll be a fun training exercise. We can see who is actually the strongest. Well, all right. I don't know if the crowd will like it, but obviously I don't want either of us to be eliminated. Of course not. Bring it on. Bella and I charged at each other. We weren't planning on taking each other out, but neither of us were holding back. The crowd was going absolutely crazy. Bella, is this too much? Maybe we should stop. No, listen to them. They're loving it. We've got to give them a good show if we want them to still pay out at the end. It didn't feel right to me, but we kept fighting on. Bella was such an amazing fighter, but she had taught me all of her moves. I landed a really hard hit, and Bella backed off. Oh, okay. I think we need to stop there. Nice hit, Zozo. Yeah, of course. You really had me on the ropes. Once the crowd realized what was happening, they started to boo. I could hear the crane's voice coming from the stands. Zozo, what are you waiting for? Finish her off. What? No, she's my friend. Fine, but people came here expecting a finale, and I'm going to give it to them. Just then, the crane dropped in from the darkness, finishing off Bella. What have you done? The animals watching are going to support me against you. <laughs> you mean these animals? I looked at the balcony and saw that the crowd had stepped closer, revealing themselves to be humans. I couldn't believe the 
Crane had been working for them this whole time. I could feel my blood beginning to boil, and in my rage, I grew into a large, ferocious rat. You're gonna pay for that. I charged at the Crane, hitting him again and again, defeating him in no time. I could hear the humans laughing as one of them shouted for the guards. The gate opened, and a bunch of human guards came running in. Get out of my way. The guards thought they could stop my rampage, but I was way too angry. I swung my sword with all my might and quickly took them all out. I could tell the humans watching were starting to get nervous. Don't think that you're getting away either. With my new strength, I jumped from the arena into the balcony and started to attack. They didn't realize who they were messing with. I managed to take several of them out as they tried to run away. Enough is enough. I've got to end this. I jumped back into the arena and ran out of the building. On day 98, I had made it back to my base, and my rage had turned to sadness. I couldn't believe Bella was gone. As I looked at the statue, I wanted to do something nice to remember her. Atop the mouse statue, I took some time to add the same hat that Bella had worn when we first met. She had always said it was one of her favorites. That night, I was looking at the statue, when suddenly, Bella appeared in front of me. Zozo, thank you for dedicating the statue to me. I want you to know that everything is okay. But it was never supposed to be like this. We were supposed to take down the humans together. I know, but the truth is, I don't think you need me. I spent a lot of time thinking about the Mouse of Myth. The old woman may have made it up, but in doing so, she also made it come true. You have become the Mouse of Myth, and I'm so proud to have been your friend. I shed a tear and thanked her for everything she had taught me. I felt like it was finally time to fulfill my destiny. It was time to save my family and the world. On day 99, I met with all of my friends in our base. Okay, guys, it's time. If any of you want to stay behind, you can. not No one will hold it against you. No one said a word. They were ready to fight. Very well. Get geared up. We attack at nightfall. Before leaving, I ran over to the chest and grabbed the mythical potion, as well as the health potions I had gotten earlier. The team regrouped in the lobby, and we headed out for the human's base. On my way out, I paused to look at the mouse statue. I could feel Bella was with us. We soon reached the gates to the human's town, but how are we going to get in? Don't worry, guys. I know just what to do. The vol slipped through a small hole in the side of the guard tower, popping out inside of the base. He ran over to the lever and flipped it, letting us all in. Nice going! Let's get him! We stormed into the base, running into a couple of humans. All together, we took them out with ease. Off in the distance, I could see the farmer. This time, he was geared up to fight. There they are, Bosco. Take him out. Bosco? Bosco attacked his owner, taking him out. Then he ran over to us. You've had me thinking more than I have in my whole life. These humans have been so mean to other animals, and I can't be part of it. I'm here to help. With Bosco now on our team, we charged into the streets. There were several humans geared up to fight, but they weren't ready for us. We all unleashed our attacks, knocking them out of our way. Keep going, guys. We're doing great. We kept fighting through the streets and soon came upon a mansion in the middle of town. This had to be where my family was being kept. We charged the doors and quickly took out the guards. But how are we going to get in? Hang on, folks. I'll get us in there somehow. The vol started sniffing around and soon found another hole on the side of the building. He crawled through, dropping into a library maze. Good thing I got into reading. I just have to follow the titles back to A, and then I'll be back at the front. Using the authors as his guide, the vol wove through the maze until he noticed a hole. Nice, a shortcut. He popped out and flipped the switch, letting us all inside. Just then, there was a sound in the town, and we could see the whole army was coming for us. Quick, Zozo, go. We can hold them off. Yeah, man, your family needs you. You guys are the best. I'll see you soon. I ran into the basement as the rest of my friends stayed back. As I entered the basement, I could see it was filled with animals, including my mouse family. Remy, it's me. We've got to get you guys out of here. Zozo, I can't believe it. Look how big and strong you are. Just then, I heard the gate slam and hurried back up the stairs. Well, 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 if it isn't the rat that got away, I should have captured you and I had the chance. You, you are just the worst. No monologues. I jumped into action, swinging my sword. Where had all my friends gone? Did he hurt them? I didn't have too long to think about it though, as he was really starting to hurt me. My health was dropping, and so my only option was to run away and heal up. What's wrong? Too afraid to fight? I had just gotten my health restored when the human caught up to me. I was going to keep you as a pet, but something like you is too powerful to be kept alive. We kept fighting, but I was starting to lose hope. He was too strong. I hurried and ran up the stairs to the roof to heal some more, hiding around the corner. Come out, come out, little mousy. I just want to talk. This human had been the cause of so many problems. He had destroyed and captured so many of my friends. He was going to pay. I took out the mythical potion. If I'm truly the mouse of myth, this will help me. I drank the potion down and felt a powerful surge of energy. I gained more hearts and felt even stronger than before. It had worked. It was time to end this. What the? How can a little rat become so powerful? What is this? This is what happens when you mess with a guy's friends, his family, his world. The human had backed up against the edge. No, okay, okay, surely we can work some 
something out. Nope, it's over. I lunged forward and knocked him off the roof, sending him falling to the ground below. He's gone, but where are my friends? On day 100, I heard a shout as all of my friends came running over the bridge. It turned out they had pushed the soldiers all the way back into the town and defeated them. I made my way back into the dungeon and finally released my family along with all the other animals. We laughed and we cried. It had been too long. Back at the base, everyone celebrated. Even all the way from Mousy Heaven, I felt like I could hear Bella jumping for joy. Our fight was finally over. On day one, I spawned in as a cute and not so ugly little duckling. I'm so tiny. I've only got two hearts. I guess that checks out. I'm not strong. I'm just a square of fluff. At least I can fly. Nope, I can't fly yet, but I can swim. And check out my duck family. I've got a mama duck and a bunch of duckling siblings. They were all swimming in a pond. Hey guys, wait up for me. Wow, this sure is peaceful. Just paddling along. My siblings and I had a great time splashing around together and following Mother Duck around. We didn't even run into any trouble. As the sun set that night, we made a little shelter and all huddled together to go to sleep. Maybe this will be an easy 100 days of survival. Hey, a duck can dream. On day two, we were all awoken by the sound of loud barking. I looked around and saw we were surrounded by some mean looking dogs. Our little duck shelter was super weak. The dogs got right in and started attacking us. Oh no, I would have to be brave. Feel the wrath of my mighty beak. I tried to fight back, but I instantly realized that a little duck stands no chance against big mean dogs. We would have to make a run for it. My duck family and I fled away, waddling as fast as our little webbed feet could take us. But it was no use. The dogs ended up surrounding us again. I have to do something. Whoa. Next thing I knew, I was tumbling fast down a steep hill. Ouch. Oof. You could definitely say I was on a roll. I fell with a splash into some water at the end of the hill. I was nowhere near my family anymore. They were all still far above me. My family was being kidnapped. I did what I could to find my way back in time to save them, but by the time I arrived, everyone was gone. Oh, no. This is not good. What'll I do without them? I made my way back to where I first saw my family. I wish I was playing with the other ducklings right now. I don't want to be all alone. If I wanted to survive long enough to find out what happened to them, I'd have to find some place to hide. I noticed a little hole along the edge of the pond and ducked into it. No pun intended. I waited out the night there and decided to track down my duck family in the morning. On day three, I woke up without any issues from the other predators. I hopped out of the hole in hopes of seeing that my family had returned. But to my great disappointment, there were no signs of other ducks around. With nothing else to do, I went around and started collecting and mining materials to build a better shelter. I didn't want to be out in the open if the dogs returned. I'll have to be smarter than the average bird brain when I build this shelter. I need to keep the big, bad dogs out. Eventually, I had a good amount of supplies and started crafting my craft table, wood tools, and then began the beginnings of my little house by the shore of the pond. Location, location, location. This house had a great view. It was the perfect spot for a duck like me. On days four to five, I still needed lots more materials for my base. I had to waddle off a little farther away from the pond to get more materials. Suddenly, I saw a peacock in the distance. I came closer and asked the peacock if I could get some wood. I explained my situation to him. The bird gasped. My family was kidnapped by a group of dogs, too. No way! What are the chances of that happening? Do you know where our families were taken? The bird wasn't sure, but explained that they were being kept somewhere so their feathers could be harvested over and over. That's awful, ruining lives just for some measly feathers. We heard a rustling and out jumped an ocelot. The peacock was instantly spooked and ran away. I wish I could get away. But that wasn't an option for me. I would have to be tough. I was only a tiny duck, but I wanted to find my family. I couldn't let this cat ruin my chances to do that. I was able to dodge a lot of the attacks the cat threw at me. Then, without too much trouble, I defeated that rascally cat. You were a bad putty tat. Once the cat was gone, I could feel myself changing. I was leveling up. I wasn't a little duckling anymore. I was a little bit bigger duckling. I had extra hearts and let's test out these wings. Hmm, I could fly a little bit. I'm a flying talking ducky now. I could only fly a short distance, but it would give me some much needed advantages. This, this was neat. On day six to eight, I returned back to my base and started crafting some stone tools. As I worked, I started hearing something outside. I carefully went and looked around. I was hoping to see my duck family, but instead I saw one of those awful dogs sniffing around my house. I wasn't going to let him get away with his evil deeds. He would be sorry for stealing my family. Hey, you, dog, who are you? And what have you done with my family? The dog refused to give any information. Instead, it lurched at me. The dog probably thought that this would be an easy fight. But this time, I had my stone tools. I was ready to take him down, and that's just what I did. Once the dog was gone, I saw that it dropped a note. I picked it up and read it. The note was in order for the dog to find the duck that got away and to bring me back to the farm located in the Badlands. Aha, I will quack this case soon enough. Now I knew they were somewhere in the Badlands. Having that dog come after me proved to be a very helpful thing after all. On days nine to 10, I did not want to waste any time. I could travel towards the Badlands. 
Having my new ability to briefly fly came in handy. Whenever I'd come across ravines or other obstacles, I could flop my way right across them. Up, up, and away! By and by, I made it to the Badlands with no harm done. I spotted the farm, but it didn't look so much like a farm. It looked more like a prison. There were so many sad animals fenced in and caged up. So many birds in cages! That's so mean! Birds need to be free to flap and fly. They shouldn't be cooped up. I noticed all the depressed animals, but I didn't notice the big wolf guard staring me down until I was close to her. I assumed she would yell at me, but instead, she lowered her voice. You shouldn't be here. I would run far away from here if I were you. Wait, huh? you're not going to try and capture me? Not if I don't have to. I'm not exactly happy with what is happening here. I'd leave myself, but things are complicated. Who is in charge here? I shouldn't be telling you any of this, but if you must know, he is a powerful monster. A big, big, big dog. Fearsome and powerful. No one dares go against him or you'll be destroyed. Just then, another guard came out of nowhere and attacked me. You need to go to obedience school. Didn't anyone tell you not to bite? I tried to fight back, but the guard was too strong. There's only one way out of this. I would have to run. I didn't like the idea of running away from my family, but I knew if I wanted to help them, I'd have to live to fight another day. I took my chance, flapping my wings. I dashed away from the farm. On days 11 to 12, I ran away. I decided to take a rest in a tree. My wings and legs were getting so tired. I was new to this flying thing. I was getting ready to rest my eyes when I heard hooting. Huh? At first, I wasn't sure where the voice was coming from, but then I noticed an old owl on a branch. Who, who are you, young duck? Oh, I didn't see you there. Pardon me. I'm Zozo. What's your name? Who, I am Wayma the Wise. Who are you running away from? I'm running from these dogs that are rounding up a lot of birds and other animals. They are throwing them in cages. They took my whole family. You should be very careful. You don't want to end up in a cage. Who? I know of who you speak. For this happened when I was a young owl, not much bigger than yourself. Animals were being taken from their homes and forced to do the bidding of their captors. We fought together and eventually defeated our foe. I'm much too old to fight again, but I can see the world is in need of a hero. Perhaps that hero is you, Zozo. Who? Me? I don't know about that. I wasn't so sure that I could save the day. I couldn't even defeat one of the guards, but I knew I would do whatever I could to help my family escape. I bid the old owl goodbye and thanked him for his wisdom. I headed back to my base. I needed to regroup and figure out a plan. On days 13 to 15, I woke and realized what time it was. Upgrade time! I wasn't strong enough yet to go up against these dogs in the Badlands, but I could make my base more secure. After all, they could be sending more dogs out to grab me at any minute. So I started improving my little lakeside home. Man, I can't believe Big Dog is capturing all these animals. It's so messed up. If I didn't figure out something quick, more animals would be in trouble. I finished my upgrades and really wished my duck family could see the home I was building for them. I think they would get a quack out of it. Thinking of them made me get an idea. I could totally have them with me, just in a different way. A statue way. You know what time it is, right? Statue making time! I began building and thought about how the ducks taught me a lot. Life should be spent with the ones you love, and being free as a bird. I liked the way it was coming along. The statue family would keep me company until I rescued my real family. I was really getting into building the statue when I heard a bird chirping excitedly. It was the peacock that had run away from the wild ocelot. Well, bless my soul, it's you. Good to see you're still alive after that run-in with the cat. Yeah, me too. My name is Zozo, by the way. I'm Taffy. I noticed your nice lake house. Did you build that all on your own? Yep, now I'm working on a statue of my duck family that got taken away. It's hard living on your own, isn't it? I miss my family too. Say, you could live here with me if you want. We can keep each other safe. I am working on a plan to rescue our families. Taffy thought that sounded great. As long as I won't be too much of a burden. I went inside and I made sure that she had everything a bird could need. On day 16 to 19, I decided it was past time I got around to making some iron weapons. I wandered around the area, and after a bit of flying around, I spotted something interesting. It was a mine shaft. Wow. Bingo! I entered the mine and followed the maze tracks to some iron. Of course, it wasn't a walk in the park down in the mines. It was a walk in the dark. I met some zombies and skeletons down there that were interested in ending my life. Back off! I've got a sword, and I know how to use it! I started swinging my sword at them and had a couple close calls, but I knocked them out pretty quickly. It was good to see I was learning how to hold my own. Still, I didn't care to run into any more creatures, so after I had enough iron, I booked it out of the mine as fast as I could. Back at the house, I readied my supplies and got to work, crafting my stronger weapons and armor with my crafting table. These will give me the edge I need to go up against those tough guards. On days 20 to 22, it was time to release the Quacken! I told Taffy to keep a bird's eye on the base while I returned back to the Badlands. This time, I would be ready. Those guards won't see me coming. 
because this time I wasn't going through the door. I was flying overhead. I know what you're thinking. I wasn't the most accomplished flyer, but I could fly better than those dogs could. It was worth a try. As I approached the walls of the farm, I took a running start and launched into the air. I'm like a flying ninja. Hey, there's a duck flying over our walls into the farm. Now that's what you call a bird brain. Well, I guess I wasn't as stealthy as I hoped I was. I landed near the guards. Wait a second, it's that troublesome duck that keeps getting away from us. Get him! I jumped into the air, dodging attacks. Toucan, play at this game, on guard! I got out my weapons and started handing out damage. I, I couldn't lie, it was a bit daunting. They would get a hit or a bite, but with my armor protecting me, they were toast after a few hits. What a rough day for you dogs, getting your tails handed to you by a little duck like me. Finally, I had finished the guards off. I didn't waste any time searching for my family. I started running all around the ground searching for my family. I wanted to save all the other animals I saw, and I promised myself I would help them. But first, I had to locate my family. But they weren't in any of the cages or fences. Where are they? What is all this squawking and hollering? A chill ran down my spine. A giant creature stomped loudly out of the foreboding base. It was enormous. A big dog. I was terrified. Guards, why are you letting some pipsqueak cause such a ruckus, eh? Looks like somebody will teach this quacker a lesson. Big dog let out a pss, pss, pss. Out came a tiger. He charged at me. I tried to fly away, but it was no use. This big cat could jump. Hi! I used my weapons, and his attacks broke my armor quickly. I was exposed, and I was losing hearts fast. hi -ya! A big wolf came bounding into the fight. It was the nice guard. She told the tiger to back off. Let's get out of here. We ran for it. Who knew how many more guards would come running after us? Or worse, big dog. Shockingly, the tiger didn't chase after us. After a while, we felt safe enough to stop running. You saved my life. I couldn't stand by any longer, and you're really brave. You might have what it takes to take down the farm. I failed to save my family for a second time. I think it's pretty obvious I can't do that. The wolf assured me that she believed in me. It was nice, but I still felt awful that I hadn't saved them yet. Where are you going to go now? Honestly, I didn't think that far ahead. I just couldn't let you become catnip. I have a base I'm building with another bird friend. Why don't you come live there until you figure things out? I'd be very grateful to stay with you both. I led the way back to the lake house. By the way, I'm Zozo. What do I call you? Awoo is the name. Mm, seems fitting. On days 23 to 26, we got back to the base. Taffy greeted us, and I introduced Awoo to Taffy. I'll need to do some upgrades and add a room for you, Awoo. It shouldn't take too long. I made sure to make the room nice and spacious for Awoo. It was the best room in the house. I noticed I hadn't added to my statue in a while, so I got to work on that too. You know, I think I'll add my friends to this piece. I'd like to honor all my good friends and family. Just then, a woo came trotting up. Wow, this is looking great. Everyone watching should subscribe so that they can see all the other cool stuff you'll make. What do you mean everyone who's watching? It's just us here. Uh, they know who they are. On days 27 to 31, I went out exploring to find new resources. I was pecking around when I heard someone who sounded very upset. I followed the voice and came upon a raccoon. Hello, is everyone okay? No, everything is not okay. I've been kicked out of my house by a big old monster. He thinks he can just push me out of my home because he's mean and can destroy me super fast. Huh, nobody ain't got no respect these days. I tried to calm the raccoon down and asked him to show me to his house. He walked away and showed me to his home. I approached the door and sure enough, there was a monster cooped up inside. The monster growled and told me to get lost before I became its next meal. Listen, this isn't your home. You really shouldn't take things that aren't- Are you still talking? Be gone! Be gone or be eaten! Silly food talking back to a predator such as I? If I weren't so cozy in here and already eaten three meals today, why I'd gobble you up in one bite! Scram, pests! It was clear this rude guy wasn't going to listen to anything I had to say. I'd have to teach this guy some manners. And I had an idea. On days 32 to 35, I started digging near the raccoon's house. What we had here was a reverse three little pigs situation. In this scenario, the big bad wolf is inside the house and I need to blow the house down. And to do that, I started to dig a tunnel deep down under the house until I found some lava pools. Wow. This was one pool I did not want to get my feathers wet in. Now that I knew where the lava was, I headed back out of the tunnel. The next part of my plan was to find some creepers. As I came out of the hole, I quickly found some. I'm just here for your gunpowder. Don't mind me. Now that I had gunpowder, I just needed one more thing, sand. I headed to the riverbed and gathered a bunch up. With the gunpowder and sand, I crafted some TNT. I think you might know where I'm going with this. I returned to the tunnel that I dug under the raccoon's house and ran down to the lava pools. I carefully set the TNT next to the lava and began setting a fuse up and out of the tunnel. Match, set, light. Everything was going according to plan. 
On days 36 to 39, I waddled up to the front door and called out to the monster. The door opened to reveal the grouchy foe. Hello again. I thought I'd let you know that you have a limited time offer to leave this house before I huff and puff and blow this house down. And how do you suppose to do such a thing? Easy. I have a brick of TNT nearby and a fuse that's ready for me to light. TNT? It's dynamite, and I'll win this fight. I would slither on out of here if I were you. This house isn't worth your life. You talk too much, duck. I yield to no one. Be gone. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. I activated the fuse and down the signal went into the tunnel. I took cover. There was a giant explosion and the floor of the house gave way, sending the monster to his fiery grave. Yes, my plan worked. The raccoon was nearby and watched the whole thing. Was your plan to destroy my entire house? The raccoon was not exactly happy, despite the fact that the monster was gone. I felt bad. Maybe I had been a little intense with my plan. Now how am I going to afford to rebuild my house? Put it on my bill. That was a joke. I don't actually have any money, but what I do have is a really big lake house that would totally fit you. I have other friends staying there too. Why don't you come stay there with us? The raccoon grumbled but agreed. He was still a little sore about his house being blown to smithereens. I showed him the way to the lake house and we made our way there. On days 40 to 43, we arrived back to the lake house. The raccoon sure was a grouchy fellow, but something about him was endearing too, like an angry little elf. They are just adorable when they get mad. You can't help but smile when they yell at you. I showed the raccoon around and created him a raccoon-tastic space for his home. I went over to my statue creations. We had my duck family and taffy. I loved how it was looking. It was only right to build a statue of the raccoon too. I started building the raccoon statue. Looking at all these family and friends in the statues made me think about another creature that had been so nice to me, Waymar the wise owl. I didn't want anything to happen to him. Maybe I'll go visit him and see if he would like to stay at the house. We are safer in numbers. I don't want him getting captured. On days 44 to 49, I returned to the tree where the owl lived. I found him sitting under the tree, but he didn't look so good. Huh? Mr. Waymar, are you okay? Who, who, ah, Zozo, my dear boy. <coughs> I was worried you might have been one of the henchmen. I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little under the weather. It's hard to get food and such these days. I can't fly, you see. I'm kind of stuck in this tree. That was not good. I couldn't stand by and let Waymar suffer. I told Waymar that I wanted him to come live at the house with us and we would help take care of him. He was so grateful but didn't know how he would get there. I'll figure out something. I'll find a way to carry you there. I immediately thought of the minecarts in the mines. Oh, those would work great. I just needed a way to push it along. I headed back to the mine and started collecting the tracks for the cart. I would make a track from the owl's tree to the base. That should be enough. I took everything back to the owl and laid some tracks down and rebuilt the cart. Climb aboard! Once he was in, I pushed Waymar along in the cart, picking up the tracks as I went along and setting them ahead until I made it all the way back to the lake house. I was excited to build him a room in the house. My little misfit family was growing so much. Waymar was super grateful for the help. He couldn't believe he had us to care for him now. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. I'm an owl. On days 50 to 53, I decided to go deeper in the mine to find some diamonds. I hadn't seen diamonds yet, but I was certain I'd run into some if I went a little farther in. As I went deeper, I ran into a big stinky toad. I smell something most foul, and it's not me. Aha! Care for a slice of my sword? I swung my sword while the toad tried hitting me with his tongue. He was no match for me though, and I quickly took him out. I went a little farther and ran into some tarantulas too. Ooh, these guys creep me out. I made quick work of them, swinging my sword as hard as I could. They too were soon gone. That's when at long last, I had found the diamonds. I mined them up as quickly as I could and then headed back home to make them into things. I made a strong pair of armor and some super strong weapons. As they say, diamond weapons hurt forever. I definitely felt I had a better chance of kicking bad guy booty with these upgrades. I just needed to figure out where my family was being held. As I was crafting, one of my friends told me Waymar needed to see me, so I went to his room. Hey, Waymar the Wise, you wanted to see me? Oh, oh, Zozo, I have loved being here. I feel so much happier. Oh, <coughs> I hate to seem ungrateful for asking you anything, so you know what? Never mind. It was silly anyways. No, please, I want to help. I'm happy to do anything. Anything at all. Well, okay, if you insist, I have the most overwhelming craving for a tropical fish. I loved eating it when I was younger. My siblings and I would devour them when we were in the nest together. <coughs> oh, how I miss those days. Sure, that's no trouble at all. I'll go right away. Waymar was so excited to hear I would help him. I started on my quest immediately. On days 54 to 57, I finally reached the water. There was a perfect spot for catching tropical fish. Now if I was a gorilla or hoglin, I might have trouble getting this fish, but I was a duck, so I was in luck. I paddled out into the water and dove after the fish. Okay, this is a little trickier than I thought. 
I spotted a school of fish and started swinging my sword. Eventually, I got one. I kept swinging until I had gotten a few more. Well, now to simply swim back to the shore with no problem. Ah! Somebody bit my tail feathers! It was a shark! I was under attack! Actually, I was more over attack as the shark was below me. Ah, oh, you like picking on smaller fish, do ya? Wait a second, don't you eat smaller fish too? Well, yeah, but that one was supposed to be mine. Now scram! I fought the shark. It was tough, but eventually I won thanks to my upgrades. Oh, check me out! I'm growing! I'm a much bigger duck now! I had leveled up! Finally! Hey, maybe I can fly now! I thought a happy thought, took off running, and started flapping my wings. I zoomed into the air! This was amazing! I can fly! I can fly! I can fly! On days 58 to 62, I arrived back in the base with the fish. As I climbed into the base, I saw that Waymar was even worse off. Oh no, Waymar, you don't look so good. Here, I brought you your favorite fish. This should help. <coughs> Thank you, Sozo. I don't have the energy to eat it just yet. Let me just put it here. I remember when Mother would return home with the fish back in 1932, just as you just did. <coughs> She liked them lightly pan-fried <coughs> and put a dollop of cranberry sauce on, on, on the side. Waymar? Waymar? Waymar suddenly passed away with a smile on his face. I wondered if I had gotten him the fish sooner if I would have saved him. But I was also glad he took his final breath, knowing he was cared for and not alone. He was going to be very missed. On day 63 to 66, I was moping around the base. I felt so sad, and that was okay. I just needed to let out my feelings and be upset. I went over to the statues and had a good sob while I added another one to the bunch. I wanted to honor Weimar's memory by adding him to the group. The statue made me feel better, and I could smile again. There was my wise friend Weimar staring back at me. This place was becoming a whole museum full of statues. It was beautiful. On day 67 to 70, Awu came up to tell me that they had found something. It's a note from Waymar. You're going to want to read this. I took the note and read it. Zozo, check out the old fort east of here. Your family might be there. And remember, things aren't always what they seem. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Believe in yourself and your plans. What was that supposed to mean? It was a nice sentiment, but I feel like it was some kind of coded message. I'd try to remember that. Well, Lawu, looks like I need to follow these clues. Can you help keep watch over the lake house while I'm gone? Awu was up for the task. In the morning, I would take my leave. On day 71 to 74, I went in search of the hidden prison in the tundra. As I traveled across the snowy forest, I spied a fort hiding in the mountains. Is that it? I saw that the fort was active and that there were guards that looked just like the ones from the farm. They were carrying large shipments of feathers out of the fort. This place must be a prison where the other ducks and birds are being held captive. They are harvesting their feathers. My blood boiled. I didn't waste another moment. I drew my diamond weapons, and with my diamond armor, I charged in. I started swinging my sword with all my mighty duck strength. Those guards didn't stand a chance. I couldn't believe how easily I blew through them all. Feel the wrath of my revenge. I made my way into the prison, cutting down anyone who stood in my way. I was feeling like I could take on anything at this point. On day 75 to 78, I reached a room that looked important. I barged in, unafraid, and saw the tiger that had almost destroyed me back at the farm. I felt a tinge of fear creep back into me. Did I have what it took to go up against him? Regardless, what choice did I have now? My family could be in this very room. I shook off my fear and went head to head with the cat. Or clawed a sword, rather. This tiger was still tough. I got lots of good hits in, but he was so strong. It wasn't doing that much damage. He was good at blocking, too. He even scratched me a few times. And I saw tons of birds in cages. Maybe my family wasn't here. As we fought, I noticed a big lever. It looked important. I took a chance and hit it hard. All of a sudden, the cage door swung open. The birds were free. The tiger was in shock at his sudden misfortune. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Some of the birds started to attack him. While he was distracted by all of the birds flying out of their cages, I was able to attack his weak spot. He was done for. The tiger was no more. I looked around the room and saw my baby duck siblings. They were so excited to see me and couldn't believe how much I had grown. I was so relieved to see them. And where's Mama Duck? The ducks look sad. Mama got taken by the big bad dog to his mansion. The other birds say that it's on some sort of volcano. That seems like a bad place to build a mansion. This dog isn't as smart as I thought. Don't worry, little ducklings. I will rescue Mama. On day 79 to 84, I spent some time searching the room where I had originally found the tiger. You never know what kind of information you can find, and this tiger was clearly a leader of this operation. He had all sorts of confidential information laying around, and if nothing else, I could take his valuables. He didn't have any use for them now that he was toast. I looked all around and found a treasure chest. 
Bingo! I opened it up and found a map. I looked closer. Well, what'll you know? A map right to the Volcano Mansion! Wow. And what else do we have here? I saw that there was a whistle in there, too. I blew it, but nothing happened. Huh? Why he kept a broken whistle, I'll never know. But, uh, I'll just keep it, just in case. With the room fully inspected, I went back to the ducklings. All right, you guys, let's get the quack out of here. I built you a home that's super secure. Let's go. I saw some of the birds that had helped in the fight against the tiger. They looked unsure of where to go and what to do. I invited them back to the lake house with us. They were very grateful and agreed to come with us. We waddled as fast as we could back to the base. On days 85 to 89, I returned safely home with all my ducklings in a row. I immediately started expanding the house and made more rooms for all of the birds. They loved their new living quarters. Sure beats a small cage. Awu and Taffy had something exciting to show me while I was away. We built something very enchanting. They had found items to make an enchanting table and had what we needed to enchant my armor. Wow, thank you, this is incredible. If I wanted to rescue Mama Duck, I needed to be as ready as possible for going up against Big Dog. This would give me a fighting chance. On days 90 to 94, I walked over to my field of statues. They were almost all done. I just needed to finish building the rest of Waymar's statue. I was so excited to reveal all of my statues to my friends. As I looked at Waymar's statue, I thought about the strange note he had given me. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Huh, you know, that gives me an idea about something. I put the finishing touches on the statues and was finally finished. A field of all my favorite friends. What a sight. On days 95 to 97, I knew it was time to go rescue my mom. I followed the map to the mansion on the volcano. This place was spooky. I could see the appeal of building a mansion on the volcano now. That is, if you're an evil villain, it's perfect for that vibe. I had to admit, I felt a bit scared. And that was okay. That didn't mean I was going to run away. No, I was saving my mother, come dogs or lava. I brandished my weapons and started fighting my way through the guard dogs along the path to the door. On day 98, I was exploring the mansion when I went into a room with a strange looking bunny man inside of it. What the? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Oh wait, I'm you! You're me! Yeah, you're me from my bunny video! Oh yeah, that was an awesome adventure! When everyone is done watching this video, they should go check that one out! Amazing! Well, I've got a family to save! See ya! On day 99, I made it into Big Dog's lair inside of the spooky mansion. After defeating tons of guards, I felt something funny happening. I was leveling up. This is just what I needed. I needed to be a mighty duck to defeat a massive dog. I'm as strong as I can get now. I was super buff. I was going to give Big Dog some trouble with my new strength. He's going to have to answer to this firequacker. It was time for the ultimate smackdown. I looked around the room and saw Mother Duck in a cage. Mom! Zozo, what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you the same question, troublesome quacker. <laughs> Looks like you haven't learned your lesson. And you've been hitting the gym, I see. Like that's gonna help you. I'm here to take my mother home. Can't you see me and your mom are madly in love with each other? Huh? Trying to split us up, are you? I'm not in love with you, you freak. You will be if I keep you locked up long enough. It's called Stockholm Syndrome, love. Look it up. Works in the fairy tales all the time. Dude, you've got some serious issues. This is no way to treat someone you like or love. That's no way to treat anyone. What a weirdo. This dog needed to be put out of his misery. I drew my weapon and attacked Big Dog. I gave him everything I had. Every bit of strength I could muster went into every hit. But he was still too strong. I was barely making a dent. Compared to him, I was like a yappy chihuahua. My blows were just not dealing enough damage. Maybe he was right. Maybe I couldn't defeat him. Had I come all this way just to fail? Then I remembered the broken whistle in the chest. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. I pulled out the whistle and blew it. Nothing. But that's how it was supposed to work. It was a dog whistle. Wow. Only dogs can hear it. Big Dog stopped attacking and sat politely. Good boy. Now play dead. Big Dog's armor came flying off of him. Go look. Big Dog was completely hairless. Big Dog explained that he wanted all the feathers to cover his naked self. There is nothing wrong with being hairless, and I'm sure many of us would have donated feathers to you, but you chose to ruin people's lives over this. I have had enough with your silly excuses. You aren't going to cage up anyone ever again. With that, a gladiator kicked him out of his window and down into the river of lava. On day 100, I let my mom out of the cage and we went back to the lake house. The ducklings were so excited to see their mother. We all had a wonderful reunion. I introduced everyone to my new family. Everyone couldn't stop raving about all the crazy adventures we'd had and how great the lake house was. We were going to live happily ever after. No more living in cages, just freedom and family.
On day one, I spawned in as a baby goat. Oh, I'm a tiny little goat. And ooh hoo hoo, look how high I can jump. Let's see how fast I can climb this hill. I hopped on over and that's when I realized I could climb the sides of the hills too. Oh yeah, look at me go. I was feeling pretty good about myself, hip hopping around, when I was suddenly attacked by a raptor. A dinosaur? What century is this? I didn't have time to worry about that though, because I only had four hearts. The problem was, I had nowhere to run. That's when I noticed I had some sort of special ability. Headbutt. All right, I'll give it a try. I swung my head and sent the raptor flying straight off the cliff. Sayonara! I headed down the hill. What was a dinosaur doing around here? Suddenly there was a rustling up ahead and a whole pack of raptors were coming right at me. More of them. I don't think I can take on a whole pack. They were closing in fast, so I jumped up the side of the hill and started to climb. They couldn't follow me straight up the side of a cliff. Better luck next time, boys. The raptor snarled at me and left. I kept watch for the rest of the day. Who knew if those raptors would attack again? On day two, I headed down off the cliff. I had to be careful just in case there were any dinosaurs lurking around. Just then, I heard a cry out in the distance. Help! I rushed off toward the sound and saw a little baby goat getting attacked by a couple of foxes. Hang on, buddy. I charged at the foxes with my head, knocking them back. No one was going to be picking on any goats today. They weren't very tough, and I was able to knock them both out. That was a close one. No problem. What's your name? You can call me Billy. That makes sense. Come on, Billy. I know a spot that's safe from all the meanies out here. Billy and I headed back over to my little cave, climbing up the mountain. This will be a safe place for us to stay for the night, but I think we can make it a little nicer. I ran outside and cut down some wood, then used it to make a crafting table. Then I used the crafting table to make a wooden axe. Now I can get all the wood I need. After I'd collected all the wood I needed, I started clearing out the cave, filling it with a nice wood floor. Then I added all the things Billy and I would need for a good starter base. Hopefully nothing would attack us in the night. On day three, Billy and I had decided we would look for supplies, but first, I needed to make some stone tools. Using my crafting table, I made all the tools we could possibly need. Hopefully, we could find a good food source. All right, Billy, let's get out there and see what we can find. While we were looking for any resources that might help, we were mostly hoping to find food because we knew we would be getting hungry sooner rather than later. Luckily for us, we soon saw a farm in the distance. Okay, I don't see anyone. If we're really sneaky, we can probably take just a little bit without getting caught. Billy and I got right to harvesting, collecting as much food as we could. Why, hello over there. Uh-oh, it was the farmer. We had to get out of there. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a moment. I don't mind if you eat my crops. In fact, eat as much as you want. Really? No one has ever been this nice to us. Yes, well, there aren't very many friendly animals around here these days. Something dangerous out there seems to be making them disappear. Well, if I had to guess, I'd say it's the dinosaurs taking them all out. Dinosaurs? Huh. Well, I suppose that must be it. If that's the case, why don't you two stay in my barn for safety? We agreed and followed him into his barn. There were some nice hay bales to lay on. I was a little unsure because our cave seemed pretty safe, but at least there was food and someone to look out for us. The sun set, and we put our heads down for the night. On days four through five, Billy and I woke up in the back of the cart, pulled by the farmer. Hey, what's going on? The farmer didn't respond and kept looking ahead. That's when I realized we were all tied up and couldn't move. Where are you taking us? The farmer continued to ignore me. After a little while longer, we arrived at a small clearing. The farmer took us out and tied us to a post. Without saying a word, he got back on his horse and left. I've got a bad feeling about this. Just then, I heard a stick break and saw a pack of raptors walking toward us. We had no way to run. It looks like it's the end for us, Billy. Suddenly, the ground began to shake and there was the sound of heavy thuds. The raptors ran away. What's going on? Is it an earthquake? It was worse. A huge T-Rex came stomping around the corner, and he had on some kind of weird looking hat. Aha! Uh -huh. My dinner is served. You look delicious. This dinosaur could talk. We had to escape. The T-Rex lunged at us, but we jumped out of the way, causing him to break our rope instead. Hurry, Billy! Run! We took off into the woods. Hopefully we could escape. On day six through eight, we were still running for our lives. The T-Rex was hot on our tails. As we came through a thick section of trees, we managed to slip through leaving the T-Rex behind them. I think we lost him. It was wishful thinking though, as he came stomping around the other side of the trees. Our chase soon led us to a river, and I hurried and swam across. Billy was still just a baby though, and his tiny legs couldn't swim very fast. It's okay, Zozo. Save yourself. Keep swimming, Billy. I won't leave you behind. Ugh, I hate getting wet. The T-Rex was so close, and I wasn't sure if he would make it. But at the last moment, he jumped onto shore, and we continued to run. We soon came bursting out of the forest, running across an open plain. Billy kept falling into small ponds, which was always a close call. Let's go, Billy. Maybe we can lose him in the trees. We ran into a purple forest, but it was no use. The T-Rex was still right behind us. Man, this guy must be really hungry. Come on, I have an idea. We circled back into the forest from before, and I headed toward a ravine I had seen earlier. A large tree had fallen across it, so Billy and I hurried and ran across. Before the T-Rex could cross, though, I quickly cut the log, stopping him in his tracks. Nah, you silly goats. You got away this time, but no one can outsmart me now. I'll find you soon enough. The T-Rex turned and ran off. 
how are we going to survive now? On days 9 through 10, Billy and I were running back to the base as fast as we could. It didn't feel like there was anyone out here that we could trust. Soon, we had arrived back at our cliffside base. Well, Billy, looks like this is going to be our home for the future. Let's fix it up. I got right to work, making our base even cooler than before. I cleared out even more space than before and lined the inside with lots of wood. I also gave us all the equipment we'd need, beds, furnaces, and crafting tables. As far as I knew, we were the only animals that could climb up steep cliffs, so no one else was going to be climbing into our base. So check it out. What do you think of the base? What part do you like the best? With the base completed, I decided to head over to some nearby caves to mine some iron. Luckily, I was able to quickly find some, so I mined it out. I also found some coal, which I was going to need to smelt the iron. I hurried back to the base and got right to work, smelting down all of the iron ore into iron ingots. I then used those to make myself a full set of iron armor, and also used them to make an iron sword, a pickaxe, axe, shovel, and hoe. This is all going to be good for me, but I think Billy is going to need some armor too. With some of the leftover iron, I made Billy some of his own goat armor. He's gonna love this. I brought it down to his base and tossed it out to him. He could barely contain his excitement. We're ready for anything now. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get that farmer back. On days 11 to 12, I left the base to go get that farmer. He was going to have a lot of explaining to do for leaving us tied to a post as dinosaur dinner. As I was making my way through the forest, I heard a howl and was suddenly attacked by a pack of wolves. Why is everyone here so mean to me? I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. It's a good thing I had just upgraded my gear though, as I was able to defeat the wolves with no trouble at all. Soon, I was back at the farm and noticed it looked abandoned. Where is that farmer? Don't tell me he's hiding. I then checked the farmhouse and saw the farmer inside, packing his bags. What did you think you were doing? Leaving us to be eaten like that. I hit the farmer and he started to fight back. He clearly wasn't ready for a fight though. Hang on just a second there, please don't hurt me. And why wouldn't I? You weren't very nice to me. Okay, okay, let me explain. Start talking, Slick. What's up with the T-Rex? That T-Rex is crazy. I don't know how he got here in our time or how he learned to talk, but he's been forcing me to feed him all my animals. If I didn't give him more, he was gonna eat me. I decided I couldn't do it anymore though, and I was gonna flee. Time to start myself a vegetable garden somewhere peaceful. I promise, I'm not a danger to anyone. I could tell he was sorry for what he had done, so even though I was still upset, I decided to forgive him and let him go. I left as he planted some vegetables I could use later. The farmer was no longer a threat, but what was I going to do about this T-Rex? On days 13 to 15, I arrived back at our base and headed up to Billy's room. When I entered, I barely recognized the place. Whoa, Billy, you've got a lot of work done. Your room looks awesome. Thanks, Zozo. I also thought it'd be fun if we built a special statue. Here, take this wool. I'll show you what to do. Billy and I headed out and got started on the statue. Billy was really excited about what we were building, and I thought it was coming along great. At least, as far as I could tell, it was pretty great. We soon finished the first part. Can you tell what we're building? I'm not really sure quite yet. I jumped down from the statue, and as I was walking, I was attacked by a bunch of spiders. Oh, look, another mob who wants to hurt me. Stay back, you punks. These guys weren't very tough, and I managed to take them out in just a few hits. Uh-oh, I can hear some more spiders in that cave. I better take them out, too. I entered the cave, and sure enough, there were more spiders. One of these spiders was different, though, and had blue eyes. The spiders were pretty mad at me, and they hurt a lot. But if I could survive a T-Rex attacking me, I could fight these guys off, too. I managed to beat them both down. When the blue-eyed guy disappeared, he left behind something interesting. Poisonous essence. Hmm, I'm not sure what I'll do with this, but I'll have to hang on to it for now. Just then, I heard more spider noises echoing from the cave. I headed in deeper. What kind of monster would be waiting for me? On day 16 to 19, I was making my way deeper into the cave when I came across a bunch of brown terracotta. Huh, I don't know what all this is doing down here, but Billy said we'd need it for the statue. I eagerly mined up all of the terracotta. Who knew when we'd be able to find more? As I scooped up the rest of the terracotta, I heard those spider noises again. Well, let's go down a little deeper, just to take a look. I soon arrived at the very bottom of a deep cave that was full of spider webs. I turned around and saw there was a huge spider on the ceiling. Okay, just stay calm, don't panic. Suddenly, the spider attacked. Spiders, why did it have to be spiders? This big hairy beast did a lot of damage and I wasn't sure if I was going to survive. If I could get the right hits in, I just might make it. I swung my sword as hard as I could and finally was able to take it down. Just then, I felt my strength begin to grow and I leveled up into a bigger goat and I've gained four more hearts. I took a closer look at my headbutt ability and noticed I had an even stronger knockback power and I could jump higher too. I hurried back to my house. I had an idea of what I could do with the poisonous essence. I walked back up to my crafting table and by combining the essence with my iron sword, I crafted a spider sword. Tomorrow, I'm heading off to find the T-Rex. On day 20 to 22, I left my base to go find the T-Rex. I wasn't quite ready to fight him, but surely he had a base somewhere. If I could find his base, maybe I could find a way to defeat him. As I walked across the land, I heard a noise up in the distance. Oh, you wild raptors, get away from me. The group of raptors were attacking what looked to be a scientist. He needed my help. Watch out, I'm coming in. I leapt into action and started to fight off the raptors. I was stronger and had better gear, so these raptors didn't know what hit him. They were a feisty bunch, but I was able to knock them all out.
out. Oh my goodness, aren't you just a marvelous little animal? Oh, well thanks. Who are you and what are you doing all the way out here? There's all kinds of strange things going on. The name's Faraday and uh, yes, I am aware of these things. They are actually all my fault. Your fault? What do you mean? The scientist began to explain. You see, I'm not actually from this time. I am from the future. I invented a time machine helmet that let me travel all the way back to dinosaur times. I ran across the land. I felt so cool knowing that I was the first human to ever step foot on the land. Later that day though, I sat down to rest and a little raptor came and scooped my helmet onto his head. This wouldn't have been the biggest problem, but that T-Rex came along, flipped the raptor into the air, and the helmet landed on his head. Thing is though, my helmet also makes the user smarter, which is why the T-Rex can talk. I had an old prototype helmet that I used to chase the T-Rex through time, but it broke when we got to this present. Luckily, the T-Rex seems pretty happy to be here since there is plenty of easy food for him. Wow, that is not the story I was expecting to hear when I woke up today. So what can we do to get the helmet back? I have some ideas, but I haven't been able to test any of them out yet. That T-Rex's sidekicks keep attacking me. He must have brought them through time with him. Well, we've got a safe base built into a hill. How about you come live with us? You can do your research in peace there. That would be terrific. On days 23 to 26, I got right to work, building Faraday a lab at our base. There was all kind of technology that he wanted added, and it took a lot of hard work to get it right. But in the end, I was able to make him everything he would need to continue doing research. When it was complete, Faraday went and took a look around to make sure everything was in working order. Later on, I hopped in the elevator and took it for a ride myself. It was kind of fun riding in the elevator and getting to look out the window, but I'd still rather climb up the side of cliffs. I met Faraday in the front of the lab, and he told me how happy he was to finally get started. It was going to take some time for him to figure things out, but he said I should make sure I upgrade my gear for when we finally face off against the T-Rex. On days 27 to 31, I decided that I could use some more upgrades that could keep me safe from attack. Faraday told me there was a special item I could get from bears that could help me with this. Bears are super scary. I sure hope nothing goes wrong as I do this. I headed to a nearby forest and soon saw a small group of bears. With my spider sword in hand, I attacked. Very nice to meet you, sir. The bear didn't seem very happy to beat me and swung at me with their heavy claws. They were pretty tough and it was a hard fight, but in the end, I was able to take him out. There were a couple of other bears nearby too, which I was able to quickly defeat without too much trouble. That's when I saw one of them had dropped what I was looking for. Oh look, steadfast spikes. This makes it harder for bad guys to knock me back. Awesome. I then noticed there were some fruit trees nearby, so I ran through the trees and collected as much fruit as I could. Fruits are the best. I always try to eat them when I can. After I collected the fruits, I decided to do some exploring. As I crossed an empty field, I saw a small house in the distance. Let's see who lives here. I knocked on the door and a raccoon was inside. Who's out there? Hi, I just wanted to see who lived here and make sure you knew about the T-Rex running around. A T-Rex? Big deal. I have a bigger problem. A bigger problem? What could that be? My magic coal is stolen. Your what? My magic coal. It's the best thing I've ever found. Do you mean stole? How I got it isn't important. Do you think you can help me or not? Sure, sure, I'll help. The raccoon explained that a coyote had grabbed it off his doorstep when he wasn't looking and told me where to go to find him. I nodded and headed off for the camp. On days 30, 32 to 35, I soon arrived at the coyote's base. This place is way bigger than the raccoon made it sound. I walked in and was immediately attacked by a pack of wolves. Relax guys, I'm just looking for a piece of coal. The wolves didn't care and continued to attack. With my attacks, I was able to defeat them before they could do too much damage. Now where could this magic coal be? What does that even look like? I kept looking through the base, fighting off the occasional wolf here and there. Eventually, I reached the top of the base as I finished up the rest of the wolves. Hey, who do you think you are coming into my house and messing with my guards? I'm here for Mr. Raccoon. You stole something of his and I'm here to get it back. <laughs> that little raccoon is such a loser. He just gets stuff out of the trash. He's weird, so I like being mean to him. Well, that's no way to treat someone for being different. The coyote and I started to fight. This guy was so mean. It's not okay to talk about people like that. By using my spider sword, I was able to poison him, which was bringing down his health. You're not as tough as you think you are. The coyote and I kept going at each other until at long last, I hit him with the final blow and took him out. That's when I saw he had dropped the magic coal. I don't know what's so special about this, but I better get it back to that raccoon. With the coal in my pocket, I hurried out of the base and headed back toward the raccoon's house. On days 36 to 39, I arrived back at the raccoon's house with his magic coal. After he came out of his house, I tossed it over to him. Woo, my magic coal. I'm so happy to see it again. Thank you, thank you. No problem. I'm just happy I could help. You have done the greatest thing for me. Here, I have something that you might be interested in. The raccoon threw out an interesting looking piece of tech. I don't know what it's for, but maybe that scientist friend 
friend of yours could use it. By the way, I get around these parts quite a bit, so if you're ever in need of information, let me know. I can probably help. I thanked him and turned to head back to the base. I wondered if Faraday would know something about this tech. On days 40 to 43, I arrived back to the base and headed up and into the science lab. I saw Faraday working in his lab and knocked on the window. Zozo, it's been a while. How are things going? Really good. While I was out exploring, I came across this strange piece of tech. Do you know anything about it? My Lanta! That's part of the teleportation helmet the T-Rex has. Without this, he's not able to travel through time. Well, that's good, right? It means we have a chance to stop him before he can ruin other timelines. Precisely. I've been doing some research of my own. Let me check my notes here. Faraday went over to his computers and printed out some notes. Ah, uh, yes. I am able to make the needed repairs, but there's a special element I need to do them. That sounds easy enough. Do you know where I can get them? I do, but the catch is that you have to defeat a rather nasty mob to get it. Faraday went on to explain where I needed to go to find them. Hopefully it's not too much of a fight. On days 44 to 49, I headed into the mystical forest Faraday had told me about. As I got closer, I was suddenly attacked by a heavy creeper. Whoa, slow down there, buddy. I swung at him and managed to knock him out. It looked like he had dropped something, which I picked up. Creeper shards? Was this what Faraday was looking for? I better keep looking around. I kept going through the forest when suddenly a bunch of the creepers began attacking me and exploding. Keep it together, guys. Jeez. I managed to fight my way through the explosions with my ears ringing in my head. I soon stumbled upon a cave. Okay, he did mention it might be in a cave. I'll take a look. I headed into the cave and was attacked by a couple of spiders. I hit them with my spider sword. How do you like a taste of your own medicine? The spiders were soon destroyed and I continued down the cave. It kept going deeper and deeper until I saw something terrifying ahead. Okay, this has got to be it. What is this thing? The earth golem made a terrible sound as it tried to hit me. He definitely didn't like me stomping around in his cave. With his giant arms, he knocked me down to half a heart. My spider sword had poisoned him and I was able to land the final blow. Yes, I got him. As he disappeared, I noticed that he dropped something. This looks like some kind of strange display? This must be what Faraday is after. Just then, I felt that familiar power flow into me, and I turned into a bigger and stronger goat. Looks like I've got 13 hearts now, too. While I was down there, I also got to work mining out the diamonds in the wall. No wonder this guy didn't want anyone down here. It was filled with good stuff. That should be everything. Let's get this back to Faraday and see what he can do with it. On days 50 to 53, I returned back to the base and headed into the lab. Faraday was hard at work and was very excited to see that I had made it back. I believe this is what you were searching for? Oh, ho, Zoom! Zozo, you beautiful being! This is going to work perfect! I was feeling pretty good about myself, so I tossed in the creeper shards as well. And what do you think of this? Zozo, this is a ground creeper toenail. Please, never give this to me again. Oh, uh, my bad. Faraday said it would take him a few days to get the next project put together, so I headed back up to the base to craft some diamond armor. I decided I could use a full set of armor, so I made that. Then I went ahead and made an entire set of tools. I always felt a little bit more safe after making new diamond gear. With my armor upgraded, I headed outside to go and do some more work on the statue. I had the terracotta I had collected before, so I wanted to make some good progress. So what do you think about the second part? Think you can still guess what it's going to be? I then headed back over to my base. This place could use some more improvements. I decided I wanted to add another level atop the cliff. We hadn't been attacked by any mobs, and I was pretty sure nothing was going to get to us. I was pretty proud of what I was able to build, and thought it looked really cool. This is a nice house, but it is pretty big. I think I should go get Mr. Raccoon and invite him to live here. It's not safe out there. On days 54 to 57, I was heading across the field when I saw that the raccoon's house had been destroyed. As I got closer, I saw him lying in the center of his destroyed house. He was clearly hurt. Oh no, who did this to you? It was those raptors. I guess some of the wolves told them I sent you to get my magic coal back from the coyote, and they attacked me without warning. I'm sorry, I can't help feeling like this is all my fault. Surely I can get you something to save you. It's too late. They took everything I have. And don't worry, it's not your fault. Thanks for being the nice one who was willing to stand up for me. And just like that, the raccoon fell over and disappeared. But before I could do anything else, I heard someone come up behind me. Well, look who it is, boys. You, you have a time traveling helmet. How? The big boss man made it for me. He's real smart now and is good with all them technologies. Speaking of which, we know you're hiding that little science man. Hand him over and we'll let you little goats live. Why would I let you guys have him? You're just going to hurt him or try to get him to make more helmets. We don't need him to make more helmets. Mr. Rex is gonna make all of us our own. Then you won't be able to do nothing. You can make as many helmets as you want, but if there's no one to wear them, that's not going to do you much good, is it? Well, what do you mean, no one to wear them? Can't you see all my boys here? All that technology on your head and you're still not very smart, are you? I jumped forward and swung at the raptor, knocking him back. There were a lot of them, but I couldn't let them get away with everything. They hurt my friend, and they wanted to hurt everyone else I knew. You guys are going to pay for what you've done. I managed to knock out all of the raptors one by one until only the leader was left. 
Boy, you're crazy. I'm getting out of here. Get back here, you coward. I chased the raptor into the forest, but unfortunately he managed to get away in the trees. I had to hurry back to Faraday. We were running out of time. On days 58 to 62, I returned back to the base and headed for the lab. I knocked on the window and Faraday came out to meet me. Zozo, what is it? You look worried. The T-Rex has figured out how to make his own helmets and is trying to give them to a whole army of raptors. That, and they hurt one of my new friends. Oh dear, I'm so sorry to hear it. I do have some good news for you though. I haven't got the time travel fixed yet, but I built a tracker into this helmet that will lead you to anyone who has a helmet of their own. Perhaps now we may be able to find their base and hit them where it hurts. I put the helmet on and started it up. Right away I could see a map that showed several X's on it. They must have split up. This is going to be a massive help in our hunt to track them down. Just then, Billy came walking up to us. Zozo, I think you should go for the raptor first. Then we can focus on the T-Rex. Those raptors could be out there, hurting even more innocent animals. That's a good point. Plus, it'll be easier to take down the T-Rex if his sidekicks are gone. I'm on it. On day 63 to 66, I decided that if I was going to fight the raptor, I needed to beef up my gear. I had nearly defeated him last time, so he'd be stronger when we met next. I headed across the land to a lavender field to get what I needed. Rumor says there's alexandrite ore here, which is even stronger than diamonds. I headed into the field and soon found some alexandrite ore. I mined it up as fast as I could. I couldn't believe I found it so quickly. With my pockets full of ores, I took a look around and saw a big sign on a hill. Oh, that reminds me. Don't forget to sub to the channel, otherwise you'll miss our next adventure together. Sometime later, I had arrived back at the base and headed over to the crafting table. With the new ore, I was able to make myself a new helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. I went ahead and equipped everything. Let's get that tracking system booted up and take down that raptor. On day 67 to 70, I stepped outside my house and booted up the tracker. Okay, I can see two X's on the map. Looks like they're still separated. This one looks a little closer to the raccoon's place, so I'm guessing that's the raptor. I headed down from my base and off into the forest. The X was still pretty far away, so I made sure to stop and check every now and then. Oh, it looked like it moved. I better hurry so I can catch up to them. I kept going in the direction of the X, passing through some pretty impressive landscapes. It was too bad there were so many mean dinosaurs about, because the land was really beautiful. I stopped and checked my map one more time. Okay, it looks like I'm pretty close, and that they might be in some kind of structure. It must be their base. I kept making my way there when suddenly I saw a fortress off in the distance. I could see a bunch of raptors roaming around and a lot of them had helmets on. Uh-oh, looks like they've made more helmets. I better get in there and fast. On days 71 to 74, I charged up to the base and attacked the guards. They had helmets of their own, but they didn't seem to be very smart. The T-Rex clearly wasn't very good at making them yet. I defeated the guards and headed into the base. There were even more raptors in here. Where's your leader? I cut through the raptors using my spider sword and other attacks. They didn't stand a chance. I had to hurry though. If they they figured out how to make the helmets perfectly, we'd be in a world of hurt. I had finally taken out all of the raptors in the courtyard when I noticed they had a storage shed nearby. I started opening the different containers to see if they had anything good. I grabbed some of their supplies, but also saw there were some raptor teeth nearby. Oh, I know just the thing I can make with this. Using the crafting table, I managed to make a raptor tooth sword. Let's see how they like fighting against themselves. On day 75 to 78, I went to go find the raptor leader when he jumped out and hit me. Ouch, get back here. I chased him into the base and down a long flight of stairs. We soon reached an open room. Who do you think you are? One single goat trying to take down a whole base of raptors? This ends here. Get him, boys. Suddenly, all the raptors in the room started to attack. This guy was no leader. He just wanted to make everyone do his dirty work for him. You'd think with all these smart helmets, you guys would actually have some kind of strategy for this fight. The raptors were swarming in on me, but I was able to keep them back using all of my weapons. Their leader watched as I finished taking out all of his henchmen. Why don't you come down here and fight me yourself? Or are you too scared? Scared? Ain't nobody calling me scared. The raptor leader jumped forward and started swinging. It turns out, he was actually pretty tough. I had learned a lot through all of my fights though, and nothing was going to make me back down. He had to pay for what he did to my raccoon friend. I hit him as hard as I could, and could see he would soon be defeated. Heh, <laughs> it doesn't matter that you beat me. You'll never beat Mr. Rex. He's gonna fix the time machine soon, and then there'll be hundreds of raptors and other dinosaurs here. You won't stand a chance. And just like that, he was defeated. He was right though. If we don't stop the T-Rex, we're all gonna be someone's dinner. On day 79 to 84, I was heading back to my base when I saw a nearby cave. It wouldn't hurt to get some more resources, so let's see what we can find. As I approached the cave, I was suddenly attacked by a bunch of mushroom pigs. Oh, I should have known I would run into something like you here. I quickly knocked them out and headed into the cave, fighting some more mushroom pigs along the way. They weren't very strong. There were a lot of them. That's when I noticed there was a bunch of redstone in here. I'm not sure what I can use this for yet, but maybe there's some kind of creative build Faraday can make with it. I continued into the cave, collecting as much redstone as I could find. There were also a bunch of mushroom pigs, which I quickly knocked out of the way. At the very end of the cave, there was a room filled with an insane amount of redstone. Oh yeah, if I ever need more, I know just where to get it. I headed back out of the cave toward my base. I needed to talk to Faraday. Hopefully he had made some progress on the helmet. On days 85 to 89, I had arrived back at the base and headed down into the lab. I gave Faraday a knock on the window and he came out to meet me. I told him all about what had happened with the raptors and how the T-Rex was starting to make 
make even more helmets. Yes, yes, that is very concerning. I have been working on some updates as well, though. Let me show you. While you look for that, I also collected some redstone. Maybe it can help. I tossed out the redstone I had gathered, when suddenly there was a crackling sound coming from Faraday's pocket. What's this? The substance seems to be reacting with the updated helmet I made. The redstone? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Oh, redstone is what you call it. This material must have disappeared before my time. Are you able to get more of this? I have an idea. Oh yeah, I can definitely get more. I'll be right back. On days 90 to 94, I headed back to the redstone cave. He said he needed more. I'll get him more. I got right to work, mining out a bunch of the redstone. There was no way this wouldn't be enough. It took a long time, but I finally gathered up all the redstone we would need. Soon I was back in the lab and gave Faraday a knock on the window. As always, he was excited to meet me. You've brought me more redstone, I presume? Oh yeah, this should be more than enough to do whatever you're thinking. I tossed all the redstone I had gathered on over to him. Excellent! Here's the upgraded helmet. This blue shield on top should protect you from the effects of the redstone. Faraday then tossed out a bunch of redstone power balls. Now that we've combined these, with the redstone, they'll pack a powerful punch against anyone wearing a helmet. In fact, it should disable it, at least for a moment. That'll be awesome! This is going to be a lifesaver, I'm sure. Ah yes, speaking of which, there is a special strength ability I've programmed in it as well, but it will only work once, so be sure to only use it when you really need it. I nodded and thanked him for all of his hard work. It's a good thing he got trapped in our time too, otherwise we'd never get out of this mess. On days 95 to 97, I decided I should upgrade the base one more time before heading out to face the T-Rex. Billy was still young and I wanted to make sure he had a safe place to live, just in case things went sideways. Once I had expanded the base a little more, I grabbed Billy and we went outside to work on the last part of the statue. This was a tough one to build, but I think it looks really cool. It would certainly scare off anyone who thinks that they're tougher than us, that is. Soon, we had completed the statue. I was pretty proud of everything we had built so far. I still had a lot of ideas for the future though. What part of the builds were your favorite? On day 98, I stepped outside the base to have a chat with Billy. All right, Billy, I'm headed off to fight the T-Rex. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Good luck, Zozo. But before you go, there was something I wanted to say. That sounds important. What is it? I just think that everyone needs to subscribe. Otherwise, we'll never win. Oh, that is important. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, as that will give us the strength to win the fight. Billy headed back inside, and I booted up the tracking system. All right, I can see him on the map. It's showtime. I headed off in the direction of the T-Rex. It was now or never. On day 99, I had made it to the edge of the T-Rex's base. He definitely couldn't have built a base like this without some intelligence. This guy isn't going to be like the raptors. This guy's for real. I made my way closer and took a look up at the tower. There's no time to waste. I'm coming for you, Rexy. I charged into the base and entered the inside of the tower where the T-Rex was waiting for me. I've been waiting for you, Zozo. Mm, that sounds kind of awkward, just standing here, alone, in a tower, waiting for me. Nah, I don't have time for your nonsense. Obviously, I've been doing other things. Oh yeah? Like what? Being sad I took out all of your friends? My friends? Please. There were more dinosaurs here too, but I got hungry. You ate all of the other dinosaurs? You truly are a monster. <laughs> Say what you want, but it doesn't matter. This helmet is nearly fully operational. I can bring dinosaurs in any time I want. And soon, I'll be able to jump time myself. That wasn't good to hear. I had to hurry and take action before he could do anything else. If you think you're so tough, you'll have to get through me first. That's the idea. The T-Rex lunged at me and we started to fight. If I was going to save the future, the time to do so was now. The T-Rex lived up to his reputation, hitting me with some hard hits. It hurt, and my health was dropping fast. Oh, I can't let this guy keep getting these hits on me. I'm not going to last long like this. I refocused and started to get in some more hits of my own. I think he was really surprised by how strong I was, especially when I would hit him with my headbutt. You think you can defeat me? Let me show you what real power is. Suddenly, two portals opened up and more dinosaurs came flying in. No, not the time travel. These dinosaurs were insane. I swung my sword and managed to take them out, but soon there were even more coming in. Don't you see? You can take down as many dinosaurs as you want, but I will always have the upper hand. He was right. I couldn't keep fighting off time traveling dinosaurs forever. What could I do? Oh, wait a second. What am I doing? If I want to stop the time travel, I need to disable his helmet. I reached for the power balls Faraday had given me and started to throw them. As they hit the T-Rex, I could see his helmet start to spark as he ran around in circles. Oh, what is going on? This is it. I've got to use that one-time strength boost. If there was ever a time I needed it, it's now. I clicked the button on my helmet and I started to grow. I even gained more hearts. I was big enough to truly take him on now. This feels amazing. Now I really am the goat. I charged at the 
T-Rex and landed a hit on him, just as the sparking effects were wearing off. What the? How did you get so big? The T-Rex started to spawn in more dinosaurs, but it didn't matter. I quickly cut them down and kept hitting the T-Rex. This is for all the animals you hurt. I could tell I was really hurting him, but he was hurting me too. It was only a matter of time before one of us fell. Who was it going to be? Just then, I delivered the final blow, and the T-Rex disappeared, dropping his helmet. I don't believe it. He's gone. But I better hurry. Faraday needs this helmet. On day 100, I returned back to my base. This time, Faraday came out to meet me. Zozo, you're back. You must have done it. I did, and I couldn't have done it without your help. Here, let me give you the helmet back. You know, why don't you hang on to it? I just need this one component. You never know. Something might come up again when I need your help in the future. You never know what's going to happen, but I'm glad that today was a success. In the meantime, I'll be here, ready for when adventure calls. On day one, I spawned into the Sika Woods as an adorable little fire rabbit. I may just be a wascally wabbit, but if you mess with me, that doesn't mean you won't get burned. I decided to hop through the woods and explore, hoping I wouldn't accidentally set anything on fire with my burning bunny body. At least I know I'll never get cold. I wanted to stay optimistic, but it got a lot harder when a big, scary bug came crawling out of the forest behind me. It was a Mermex soldier. Halt, by order of Her Majesty, the Mermex Queen. What is your business here? Don't worry, sir. I, I was just looking around. I spawned nearby. I can just leave if you want. Not so fast. We've been told to keep a lookout for suspicious rabbits. And you're both suspicious and a rabbit. Come with me. But what if I don't want to come with you? Then I'll just have to take you by force. I didn't like the idea of being taken by force, so I turned and hopped away as quickly as I could. I may have not had any weapons, but at least I was extremely fast. I'm just a baby fire rabbit for now with only 10 hearts. But if I can get away from these creepy crawlies, I'll be able to get bigger and stronger. But my little self pep talk was interrupted by another Mermex soldier popping out from behind a tree and stopping me in my tracks. Don't you know it's rabbit season, silly bunny? Us Mermex soldiers are everywhere in the Seco woods. You better come with me or someone somewhere is going to enjoy a bowl of rabbit soup tonight. That was clearly a threat, so I decided to play along and follow him so I could save my fire rabbit skin. On day two, the Mermex soldier pushed me all the way to a weird, bee-like looking hive base on the edge of the woods. Not the kind of place where I'd typically like to spend my day. What is this place? This is the hive, you misbehaving little rabbit. This is where me and my fellow Mermexes live with our wonderful queen. She's currently in a different biome on royal business, but when she returns, she'll question you personally. How long will that take, though? It will take as long as it takes. Do not question the judgment of our beloved queen. He didn't talk to me much after that. I was taken to some kind of holding cell in the hive and pushed inside to wait for the return of the queen. But she could be gone for weeks. I don't want to be trapped in here for all that time. You're telling me. I turned and saw a pink pixie fluttering around the cell looking bored. I'm Paris, the pink pixie. I feel like I've been trapped in here forever. I was just flying through the Seco woods, minding my own business, when those Mermex goons grabbed me and dragged me in here for being suspicious. Sorry for making assumptions here, but can't you use your pink pixie magic to get us out of here? Nope. These walls are magic proof. Hmm. But are they fireproof? I walked closer to the wooden fence gates until they caught fire and the blocks started breaking. Soon enough, we were free. As we escaped, a Mermex soldier almost caught us, but we managed to get out of there. Thank you for freeing me, Zozo. I'm going to go see my family. They're probably worried about me, but I hope we meet again someday. I hope that too, Paris. Safe travels. Paris left, and I decided to get out of the Sika Woods before more Mermexes were sent after me. On day three, I found my way into the meadow, where I figured that no Mermex soldier could ever find me. Man, escaping that hive was hungry work, though. I wonder if there's some food around here that's perfect for a little fire rabbit like me. Not long after, I found a patch of carrots. Perfect! I dug them up and ate them, feeling my hunger bar replenish. It made me feel a whole lot better. Until another, bigger rabbit hopped over to me, and he didn't seem pleased. Hey, those are my carrots you just ate. They were prized, award-winning, and you just ate them without even asking me. Do you have any idea how messed up that is? Oh no, I'm so sorry. I didn't know they were yours. I would never would have eaten them if I did. You think that makes me feel better? I'm still down a bunch of carrots. We rabbits should stick together, not steal from each other. 
Is there any way I could make it up to you in the name of rabbit solidarity? Hmm. Well, there are a few favors you could do for me. Follow me. I'll figure out a way for you to pay off your debts. Thank you so much for your forgiveness. I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm KR. Let's go. And I followed KR, eager to get back into his good graces. From day four to day five, KR escorted me back to his base in the meadow. He must have been pretty brave to live out here in the middle of nowhere. This is my place. Don't tell anyone about this place under any circumstances. Why? Because I like my privacy. Don't ask too many questions. It's not a likable quality. Inside the base, he explained to me exactly how I could repay him for eating his special carrots. As you know, the world is hard for little rabbits like us. People think they can pick on us, look down on us, and I've seen too much of that throughout my life. I've kept a list of the kind of people who have made my life harder over the years. Rabbit haters, you know. Help me get through my list, and not only will you be happier, you'll have repaid your debt. That sounds like something I could do. Where should I start, KR? You can start by getting out of here and making your own base. It'd be dangerous for us to be seen together. Take this stone sword and stone pickaxe and make something of yourself before you come back to me. He gave me the tools and I got out of there. The meadow gave me the creeps, so I decided I'd set up my base in the ebony woods instead. I used the pickaxe to mine some stone. I made myself an axe and cut down some trees for wood. I found a nice clearing in the forest and built myself a basic base where I could at least sleep with a roof over my head for the night. But when I was done building, I got my first unwelcome visitor, one of the Mermex soldiers who had captured me earlier. There you are! I knew you were the killer rabbit, and now I'm gonna put you down. Killer rabbit? What? That's not me! I'm not gonna listen to your lies! Time to battle you, bad bunny! He seemed strong, and as I was, I felt like I couldn't beat him! I summoned up my strength and leveled up! I got bigger, stronger! I now had 20 hearts and a new ability! The fireball attack! And with one blast of that fireball, the Mermex soldier was gone! I really am living up to the fire rabbit name! From day six to day eight, I was exploring the ebony woods a little further. It was a strange and magical place, made even more magical by a sudden reappearance, Paris the Pink Pixie. I immediately hopped over to meet her. Hey, Paris, is everything okay? I wish I could say it was, Zozo, but no, something terrible happened. I went to see my family, but they were all gone and their home was destroyed. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, Paris, that's terrible. Do you want to stay at my base? I can help you in your time of need. Thank you, Zozo, but right now, I need to be alone. We'll speak again soon. Be safe out there. Paris the Pink Pixie left. I felt terrible for her and started to wonder if maybe the ones who destroyed Paris's family were the same ones that KR warned me about. Maybe it was time to begin my quest. I returned to KR's base in the meadow and asked him what I should do first to complete my mission. Your first target is the hairy troll further into the meadow. He's a violent, dangerous individual, so you should take him out with extreme prejudice. Do you think he could have been behind the destruction of the Pink Pixie family? What? How do you know about that? I know the survivor. Hmm, there's a strong possibility. But don't ask him about it when you meet him. Just destroy him. He'll try to deceive you. From day nine to day 10, I followed KR's instructions and went further out into the meadow. Wow, this is fast and empty. But I pressed on. I needed to avenge Paris and repay my carrot debt to KR. There was no backing out now. Suddenly, the hairy troll jumped out and ambushed me, ready to attack. I knew he'd send someone after me. Of course, he'd be too cowardly to go after me himself. Pathetic. Cowardly? No, what's cowardly is destroying a whole family of pink pixies rather than picking on someone your own size. I'm just doing a favor for a friend. You have terrible taste in friends. I've never hurt any pink pixies. He told me you'd lie. Let's battle. The hairy troll was a tough enemy, but with my sword and fireballs, I was able to defeat him in the end. Shortly after his defeat, a wolf woman came out of the forest. Wow. You really fried that troll. I had no idea anyone could do those awesome fire tricks. Thanks. I don't like hurting people, but I needed to stop him from ever hurting anyone, like he hurt the Pink Pixie family. Oh, the Pink Pixie family. I heard about that. It was terrible. But I don't think a troll was behind that. It was some kind of other creature. 
So, the attacker is still at large? Oh no, I need to speak to KR about this. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to KR's base, telling him that I'd defeated the hairy troll, but that the one who'd attacked the Pink Pixie family was still out there somewhere. If the hairy troll wasn't behind it, then it must be the Thorn Wolf, a truly dangerous and evil creature that lives deep in the ebony woods. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the Thorn Wolf was behind the Pink Pixie family attack. Thorn Wolf? Even the name sounds scary. It's definitely a scary creature. I recommend getting better weapons and tools before you go to destroy it. Otherwise, you may find yourself at a disadvantage. Good idea, KR. I'll get right on it. I found my way to a cave in the meadow and explored until I found some iron ore veins inside. I used some of my spare stone to make a furnace, then mined the iron ore and smelted it into ingots. Now time to do some crafting. I created an iron sword and an iron pickaxe, an iron chest plate, and then left the cave where I ran into a creeper spider. Oh no! Rather than engaging, I ran away as quickly as I could. The creeper spider exploded behind me, leaving a huge crater in the ground. From day 13 to day 15, I ventured further into the ebony woods than I ever had before. My little fire rabbit heart filled with fear. If the thorn wolf really was as powerful and as dangerous as KR told me, then I could be in real danger even being around here. As I was exploring, I heard a sound behind me, so I turned and saw the thorn wolf. He was right there, and I was totally surprised. I braced myself for an attack, but he didn't attack. Instead, he spoke with a kindly voice. Is everything okay, young rabbit? You seem nervous. Are, are you the thorn wolf? Oh, yes, it is my duty to patrol the ebony woods and protect the creatures there. So you're not a bad guy? Well, we always try our best, don't we? Stay safe out there, little rabbit. The thorn wolf left, and I was confused. He was nothing like KR told me. Something really wasn't right here, and I needed to speak to KR immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to the meadow to find KR's base, but it was empty and KR was nowhere to be seen. This is strange. Maybe he's just out there running some errands. I returned to my base, only to find that Paris the Pink Pixie was there waiting for me. This couldn't have been a good sign. I knew that much. What's wrong, Paris? Zozo, it's an emergency. I know who destroyed my family. Who? It was a creature they call the Killer Rabbit. It's one of the most dangerous things in the overworld. Killer Rabbit? K... R... Oh no! And just like that, it all came together. K.R. was the killer rabbit, and he was behind everything. That meant I needed to get back to the thorn wolf as quickly as possible. He was in terrible danger. And I was right, and I didn't realize it soon enough. When I was there, thorn wolf was already gone, and only the killer rabbit remained. I wondered how long it'd take you to figure it out. Oh well, you are at least a good tool for a while, even if you're useless to me now. I don't get it. Why were you using me like that? I needed a fall rabbit, someone to take the heat for me, and who's better at taking heat than a fire rabbit? Besides, you really did eat my carrots, and I couldn't let that fly, could I? You may have used me, killer rabbit, but now I'm gonna take you down. I fired a fireball at him, and it seemingly had no effect. And when he hit me, it was like being hit by a train. Everything went dark, and I was gone. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up, and the killer rabbit was gone. Instead, a mysterious figure was standing next to me, a large hippogriff. Do you work for or with the killer rabbit? Answer quickly. No, I only ever worked with him when he was tricking me. Now I know who he truly is. I'm 100% against him. Good, then we have a common enemy. I am Laharl the hippogriff, and I was a friend of the thorn wolf. We were defenders of the people, guardians of the forest. But now he's gone, and only I remain. You're not alone. I want to be better. I'm Zozo. Let me become a guardian of the forest, too. We're going to defeat the killer rabbit together. Come to my base with me, and we'll start to plan. Agreed. We will defeat that monstrous creature and keep the people of the forest safe forevermore. I went into the forest with a Laharl, and we gathered enough stone and wood to construct a new house for him to stay in. Together, we'd be stronger than we'd ever been before. From day 23 to day 26, I was hopping back through the Sika woods where I first spawned when I saw the pink glow of Paris the Pixie. Predictably, Paris the Pixie was in peril perpetuated by a pestering pursuer. <laughs> Excuse me, so much alliteration. 
Zozo, is that you? Help! This wind serpent is trying to blow me away! The wind serpent did indeed look fierce, but even a gust of wind will only fan the flames of this fire rabbit! I hopped forward and hit the wind serpent with a fireball. The slithering mob stopped chasing Paris and started to fly towards me. We battled it out in melee, and I was able to bring it down with my sword. Somehow I knew I could count on you, Zozo. I'm just glad you still trust me. I attacked all the wrong people because of KR, and I let that menace run free all the while. That killer rabbit gives our kind a bad name. You weren't the only one fooled by his goody-good act. Don't worry, Zozo. I know that you're out here trying to do the right thing doing the best that I can, and I'll work with anyone else who is willing to help me take that lying killer down. Count me in. My family got hurt because of his wicked ways. He won't be getting away with that. Thanks, Paris. From day 27 to day 31, I found a flock of sheep wandering through the woods. They looked really tired, like they had been walking for several days. I hopped over to see what was going on and soon found out what had happened. These sheep were friends of the thorn wolf from the ebony woods, and since he was gone, they'd been looking for a new protector to save them from the killer rabbit. You'll be safe at my base, sheep. Not only is it back where you used to live, but I'll be your protector now. When I got back to my base in the ebony woods, I helped the sheep settle in and then went to go see how Laharl was holding up. Welcome back, Zozo. I made the base cooler by adding some rad banners. Wow, awesome work, Laharl. All the buildings of the base now had awesome rabbit banners on them, which suited me just fine. Meanwhile, over at the real Killer Rabbit's base, not the pretend base over in the meadow, he was now in the process of maniacally planning his next wicked plot from his evil lair. Now, there may be a few people around who know that I'm the Killer Rabbit, but I think we can arrange some accidents for those individuals. What say you, my fine warden dragon friend? If there's anyone who is good at causing accidents, it's me. They might as well call me Daisy. First name, Oopsie. Full name, Oopsie Daisy. You just had an accident of the you're not gonna be around anymore kind. We're really gonna need to work on your threatening lines there, Oopsie. It's difficult. My evil boss is a rabbit. I mean, sorry, boss. You better wise up. I'm not just any rabbit. I'm a killer rabbit. From day 32 to day 35, I remembered that one of the Mermex soldiers that I had encountered said that they had been looking for suspicious rabbits. So I made the choice to go and seek out the hive of the Mermex queen. It might be a rabbit, but I know what suspicious one they might be looking for. If I tell them who the killer rabbit is, maybe all the other rabbits will stop being captured like I was. I made it to the hive and found that it was guarded by Mermex soldiers. I guess I should have expected that. Halt and stay halted. I'm not halting. I'm here to see the queen. Like we'd fall for that one, rabbit. The Mermex soldier tried to fight me, but I dodged his attacks. I didn't want to hurt anybody while I was trying to make an alliance, so I shot a fireball away from them to let them know who I was. Look, I'm not the rabbit you're looking for. I've got fire powers. Fire powers? But that means you're the one who broke out of the cell. That is true, but only because I shouldn't have been there in the first place. I know which rabbit really did the crimes, so he should be the one who does the time. Okay, we still have questions, but that rhyme convinced us to take you to the queen. Yes, don't be mean. Let me see the queen. You can stop rhyming now. The Mermex soldiers let me inside of the hive so that I could have my important meeting with the Mermex queen. Naturally, the room where I was able to speak with the queen was her own throne room. I am the Mermex Queen. What is your request to my majesty, small rabbit? It concerns the fate of all the land, your Mermex Queenliness. I know who the killer rabbit is. You do? Oh, at long last, that monster has been found. How do you know about him? He went by the name K.R., and now he's on a new spree of attacks on innocent creatures all throughout the biomes. He always was like that, even in my mother's time. She was the Mermex Queen before me, and when the creatures of the woods started being attacked, she suspected everyone but the innocent-looking rabbit. It was her mistake, because the killer rabbit claimed her as another one of his victims. I had to take over the throne, just as my mother's killer went into hiding. I've been hunting him down ever since. It's such a sad story. I promise to help you bring the killer rabbit to justice, with all the fire in my heart. There is more, but it's far too painful to talk about. You should go home for now. I will send a soldier to visit once I've emotionally prepared myself. From day 36 to day 39, I got ready to take my armor up a notch in defense by preparing to go back into the cave for some more iron ore. The killer rabbit was a lot older and more experienced than me, so I had to be all the more prepared for our eventual showdown. 
I soon found a spot in the cave where iron was abundant and mined away, adding the iron ore to my inventory. Next, I got out my crafting table and smelted the iron ore into the iron ingots I would need to craft the rest of my armor. That should do it. All right, time to become an iron fire rabbit. I made myself an iron axe since I had been gathering so much wood lately, and an iron helmet, iron leggings, and a pair of iron boots to complete my full set of iron armor. You can't see it on my fur, but believe me, it's there. Now equipped with all this brand new iron gear, I ventured deeper in the cave and found that beneath the iron, there were a few diamonds to be mined. I made sure to get them before I left. Later on, I was back above ground when I got an unexpected visitor. He was half rabbit and half wolf, a rabbit wolf. Hi there, bet you never met nobody like me before. Hey, you're right. Anyway, the Mermex Queen said I could leave the dungeon cell at the half if I went and brought you back to her. Let me guess, her soldiers locked you up because you were a suspicious rabbit? Well, yeah, I mean, look at me. I'm such a suspicious rabbit, it's hard to know if I'm even a rabbit. Anyway, you should go meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. From day 40 to day 43, I went to meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. Your queenliness, I am excited to work together and solve these crimes. I knew the rabbit wolf wouldn't fail to bring you here. If you ever see him again, make sure to thank him for me. I certainly will. So, are you ready to tell me more about the killer rabbit and his previous rampage? Yes, it's time you knew everything about what happened with him. Even though we had met in a secret location and were trying to keep our conversation quiet, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon had super powerful hearing and was able to pick up on our voices from another part of the woods. Oopsie Daisy, time for an accident to happen, on purpose. He barged into the clearing and fired a sonic laser blast at me, which did many hearts of damage. Hey, what's the big idea? Nothing. I just happened to be totally unintentionally getting rid of two people who know who the killer rabbit is by accident. Aha! Now I know who you work for. You just said it was the killer rabbit. Ah, darn it. I actually didn't mean to do that. Oh well, I'll just make you disappear. Then nobody will know. He fired another sonic blast my way, which I almost avoided. I countered with a fireball that didn't seem to do much. I looked around for the Mermex Queen and saw that she had escaped while I had been talking to the Warden Dragon. Yeah, I should probably do the same thing. I ran off into the woods, trying to go a different direction so that the Warden Dragon wouldn't know who to follow. From day 44 to day 49, I had gotten away from the Warden Dragon and safely arrived back at my base. I never expected the Mermex Queen to be there as well, waiting to continue our conversation from where we left off. I was happy to see that she was okay and could fend for herself, even without her soldiers. I guess the Killer Rabbit knows we both know about him. That's why he sent that Warden Dragon to destroy us. Perhaps he needs to rely on his henchmen now, because he isn't as strong as he used to be. You mean that he used to be stronger? He totally demolished me the last time we fought! Well, he still is the Killer Rabbit, but he used to carry around a secret rare battle axe that made it really easy for him to make anyone he wanted disappear forever. He was a Killer Rabbit with a Killer Battle Axe? That's so scary! How did you stop him? I didn't. A mysterious mob known as a Crimson Phantom laid a curse upon the Battle Axe so that the Killer Rabbit could never use it again. I know. Maybe if we find this Battle Axe, we could use it against him. Didn't stop the Killer Rabbit from being evil, but it did weaken him. Then I'm off to the meadow. That's good thinking, Zozo. I heard that the Battle Axe was crafted deep down in the depths of the meadow. You can find some clues about it there. From day 50 to day 53, I delved all the way to the end of the meadow in order to find out more information about who crafted the battle axe that the killer rabbit used in his previous reign of terror. After a lot of searching, I came across an abandoned workshop that looked like it was once used for smithing weapons. This must be the place, I reckon. I found a book near the crafting table that was titled Axe Maker's Notes and opened it up to read the words inside. I have made a lot of axes out of a lot of different materials in my day, and boy do I love doing it. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. In fact, it's the only thing I do. I'm the axe maker after all. But this latest axe, it's not like the other ones. It's got an evil aura around it, like it's too sharp and too scary just to be used on trees. This axe seems like it could kill someone. It's a killer axe. I better get rid of it before someone uses it for evil. Oh, wait, what's that? Someone is coming. The sentence in the book ended there, and the rest of the pages were blank. Oh no, the killer rabbit must have snuck up behind the axe maker and gotten rid of him so he could steal the killer axe. What a fiend! 
Still, from what I'd read, the battle axe was a powerful weapon. It must be able to hurt the killer rabbit if he was willing to do so much to get it. I looked around for more clues, but couldn't find any, so I gave up and started to head back to my base. From day 54 to day 57, I was making my way through the meadow when I happened to pass by the area where I had found those carrots before. Didn't the killer rabbit say that those carrots were his? If I know rabbits, and I probably do because I am one, then that could mean that the killer rabbit's base might be around here too. I was excited that I had discovered a clue, but that excitement was quickly lost when the warden dragon showed up to blast me with a sonic laser attack. Oops, pardon me. That time I was trying to get rid of you, and I accidentally didn't do enough damage. You did enough, actually. You don't have to do any more damage. No, I think I do. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do all the damage to you. As much as I wanted to, I was still not strong enough to take down the Warden Dragon, so I made my escape as quickly as I could. Even though I didn't find it, I was right about the Killer Rabbit's base being nearby. The horrible hare was there right now, scheming up a storm. Soon, yes, very soon, I will find a way to reverse the curse and take back my battle axe. All of them will pay then. From day 58 to day 62, I had made it back to the base and saw that Laharl had created a storage room for all of our weapons. Great work, Laharl! Thanks. I just figured since you were talking about a rare secret killer battle axe, I should make some room for it. One thing led to another, and now there's a whole room full of every other weapon we had. There seems to be a lot of empty spaces. I guess I'll have to make us some more. We could definitely use some diamond ones, since we don't have any yet. Good point. I'll see if there are any more diamonds down in the mine. I went down to the mines, and it was just my luck. There were some more diamonds right in the same cavern where I'd found the previous one. I dug all around so that I could have enough for a diamond weapon to put in the weapon storage room. Once the diamonds were gathered, I chose to craft two diamond swords, one for myself and one for storage. I also crafted a diamond chest plate and a diamond pickaxe because diamonds make everything better. From day 63 to day 66, Laharl and I were hanging out in the base when our conversation suddenly turned serious. When are we gonna do something about that killer rabbit, Sozo? He's starting to become a real problem for everyone. I know, Laharl, but I can't even defeat the clumsy warden dragon he sent to make me disappear, much less the killer rabbit himself. But if you had that secret rare killer battle axe, you might stand a chance. But that's the trouble. I don't have that secret rare killer battle axe. Not yet you don't, but I think I might know where it is. Take me to it then. Don't you know how serious I am about wanting to stop the killer rabbit? Laharl listened to how serious I was and took me to the eroded badlands where we found some cursed ruins. We walked up to them until we hit an invisible barrier. How did these ruins get so cursed? A long time ago, the Crimson Phantom put a curse on these ruins that won't let anyone else enter. The Crimson Phantom? Isn't that the same creature that cursed the battle axe? Yes, but it looks like we need to get him to lift the curse before we can check to see if the battle axe is here. From day 67 to day 70, the Mermex Queen came into the base and told me that she had also been searching for the Crimson Phantom. He's been sighted in the Ebony Woods, but my gods weren't able to capture him. He's even taken a few down. I didn't realize this Crimson Phantom was such a dangerous creature. He sure is. I could really use your help bringing the Crimson Phantom in. Then let's do it. You can count on me, your queenliness. He left my base and went through the woods to find the Crimson Phantom flying away after having just defeated one of the Mermex soldiers. You'll never take me alive. I'm the dang old Crimson Phantom, you bunch of goofballs. Knock it off, Crimson Phantom. We need your help. Nah, who needs my help? He attacked, so I had to blast him with fire. The Crimson Phantom was definitely strong based on the way he tanked my attack. So I whacked him a few times with my diamond sword. Please, don't fight. We just want to stop the killer rabbit, and we know that you do too. You put a curse on his battle axe so he couldn't hurt people with it. So what if I did? It was probably the nicest thing I ever did for anyone. It doesn't have to be if you help us again. Please, Crimson Phantom. Ah, shucks. How can I say no to an innocent rabbit? And just like that, I convinced the Crimson Phantom to help us retrieve the secret rare killer battle axe so we could defeat the killer rabbit. From day 71 to day 74, that pesky accident-prone warden dragon showed up at my base to try to get rid of me again. Come on out and face me, Zozo. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> it will. 
I hadn't gotten any stronger since we fought before, but my weapons and armor were a bit more durable, so I hopped out and decided to take him on. Take this, Daisy! Fireball! I circled around the Warden Dragon, shooting fireballs and trying to avoid his sonic blast. I wasn't fast enough, and my armor couldn't protect me. I took many hearts of damage. I got down to just half a heart. Oh no, is this how I'm gonna go out? Apparently not, because instead of doing you in, I'm accidentally going to steal your best friend the Harl, and completely not on purpose, hold him hostage somewhere. You monster, why? I don't know. I'm not sure why I do anything anymore, but I am evil. The Warden Dragon dragged Laharl away, and there was nothing I could do about it because I was too weak. I can't do this. I'm just a rabbit. I went to the room to mope about it and close myself away from everyone else. I couldn't let them see me after such an embarrassing defeat. That was until the Crimson Phantom arrived. Hey there, Zozo. Don't blame yourself for what happened. You'll get Laharl back. You really think so, Crimson Phantom? Of course I do, and once you do, you won't have to worry, because I've given your base some sweet defenses. He wasn't kidding. The Crimson Phantom had made a wall around the base, which had a curse on it so it wouldn't allow any of my enemies to pass through. From day 75 to day 78, I learned more about the perimeter wall, like how it would only let people that I trusted into the base. The Mermex Queen was definitely someone I knew I could trust. The perimeter wall let her right through. Greetings, your queenliness. Zozo, there is one more thing I didn't tell you about the Killer Rabbit, but I'm going to tell you what that is now. What is it, Mermex Queen? Your friend, Laharl, he kept this secret from you because he wanted to protect you. The truth is that the curses of the Crimson Phantom can be reversed by the feathers of a live hippogriff. You mean that now the Killer Rabbit can... Reverse the curse and reclaim his ultimate weapon, yes! You must go and rescue Laharl before the Killer Rabbit extracts his feathers. I will. I think I know now where in the meadow his base is. The Mermex Queen gave me some javelins to serve as a ranged weapon and wished me luck as I departed. From day 79 to day 84, I searched for the Killer Rabbit's base in the meadow. I knew that it had to be somewhere around where I had found that fateful carrot patch. Sure enough, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon was wandering around in plain view of that area. He had taken Laharl captive earlier, and now he was going to tell me where he was. Hey you, give me back my friend. Oops, you aren't supposed to find me. Well now I have, and I'm gonna scorch you. I rained fireballs and javelins down on him from a distance, but it still wasn't enough. And his sonic blast still hurt quite a bit. Uh -oh. What was I worried about? <laughs> it's not like you could defeat me even if I accidentally let you. I was beginning to think I was done for, and then Laharl swooped down from above and attacked the Warden Dragon while his sonic blasts were focused on me. Oh no, I should have seen that coming, but I accidentally did not. Laharl's attacks did enough damage to bring the Warden Dragon down and defeat him for good. After the Warden Dragon was defeated, I approached Laharl. Laharl, you're free. I sure am, Zozo. That Warden Dragon accidentally let me go before we even got to the lair of the Killer Rabbit. I've just been down here in the meadow, trying not to get caught again. At any rate, I'm glad you managed to get away. I was worried about you. I found something else while I was down here. A golden apple that is said to imbue the one who eats it with true strength as long as they are pure of heart. It's yours now, Zozo. Gee, thanks! I'm starving! I ate the golden apple and could feel myself transform. I must have been pure of heart because I grew into a supersized fire rabbit and had a grand total of 60 hearts. My jump was given a big boost too, allowing me to reach higher heights than ever before. From day 85 to day 89, Laharl and I went back to the base where things were once again becoming super ultra serious all of a sudden. Zozo, it is time. I'm gonna take you back to the eroded badlands so we can get that battle axe. But how are we going to bypass the curse? Oh wait, aren't your feathers the way to do it? Yes, my feathers can make a magic key that will let you get through. I held off on telling you until I was sure that you were pure of heart. But now that I know you are, and that you won't become another killer rabbit once you get the battle axe, I can give you the key. Laharl gave me a bunch of his hippogriff feathers, and I crafted them into a key. Use the key at the ruin. It'll be like I am with you. I did as my good friend Laharl said, and traveled back to the cursed ruins in the eroded badlands. With the magic key, I was able to bypass the curse and enter the ruins. Inside, I found the battle axe, lying in wait for me to claim it. I'm gonna put the magic key that Laharl made away. It'd be pretty silly if I accidentally reversed the curse and made it so that the killer rabbit could use the killer axe. 
After I had safely stowed the key, I took the secret rare battle axe from its place and left the ruins. From day 90 to day 94, I stepped out of the ruins and found the killer rabbit standing out there to confront me in the eroded badlands. How do you do, fellow rabbit? It's over, KR. I have the battle axe now, and you'll never break the curse on it. That's the thing about you, Zozo. You always think you understand everything. That's why it's so easy to trick you. Nuh-uh. This time I do understand everything. I understand that you are a ruthless monster who must be stopped before he hurts anyone else. But think of what we could accomplish if you joined me. Nobody would disrespect us bunnies anymore. We would be the top of the woods. I'll never join you, killer rabbit. Suit yourself. By the way, I accidentally picked up some feathers that your hippogriff friend Laharl dropped down in the meadow. That's not good. The killer rabbit leaped forth and wrestled with me for the axe. I was a strong rabbit, but he was still stronger. And before I could stop him, he reversed the curse on the axe and took it back. No, you tricked me. I thought I understood, but I didn't. You're too naive. Now wallow here in the sand pit. He jumped on the sand I was sitting on, and the impact of his landing made the sand collapse, so I fell into a deep hole. From day 95 to day 97, I used my boosted jumps to slowly but surely make my way back up to the surface of the eroded badlands. There was no time to lose. Now that the killer rabbit had the super secret rare killer battle axe, he was going to go on his biggest spree of attacks yet. And I know who he's gonna go after first. I rushed back to the Sika woods and entered the hive of the Mermex Queen. Her soldiers were destroyed, and that wasn't even the worst part. In her throne room, the Mermex Queen was dying after having just been attacked by the killer rabbit and his killer axe. No, your queenliness! Zozo, so you made it. I'm so sorry. I tried to stop him, but he tricked me once again. And now he's wiped out your entire hive. Do not worry. As long as there is a Mermex Queen, the hive will be able to replenish itself. What you must do now is get the battle axe away from him at all costs. I'll do it. Even if I have to risk everything, I will do it. In a few days, my final egg will hatch and become the new queen. You need to protect her for me. I will. I will, your queenliness. She passed on, leaving me behind in the world that I must save. On day 98, I returned to my base in the Ebony Woods and found that the perimeter wall and the rest of the base was destroyed. Laharl was there, but nobody else had survived the attack. He came for the Crimson Phantom Zozo to make sure that he was never cursed again. Now the battle axe is his forever. Don't say that, Laharl. I know that you and I get serious sometimes, but we always keep on trying to make things better. The only reason he left me alive is in case anyone else cursed the axe so that I could reverse it. So that killer rabbit only spared you for his own reasons. That makes me so mad. He'll probably fool you again if you give in to your emotions. Well, my emotions are pure right now. And every spark of fire in my being demands justice. Then what the heck? Go get that battle axe. You're strong enough now. I can feel it. Laharl cheered me on as I marched off through the woods. On day 99, I arrived in the meadow with a burning passion in my heart. I was ready to take down that killer rabbit with all my strength and all of my fire. Once I was inside his base, I came face to face with my nemesis once more. You never learn, do you, Zozo? Like fire, you think you're bright, but when it rains, you go out. The only rain I see now is your reign of terror, and it ends here. A clever use of two words that sound alike, but you've forgotten already that I have the killer axe. Actually, it is you who has forgotten. That battle axe was accidentally forged to be evil, but it was touched by a hero who was pure of heart. I jumped at him, and once more, we wrestled with the axe. This time, I managed to get it away from him and ran out of his base. The secret to the battle axe that I was finally able to understand was that it was cursed twice. Once I was back home, I used some more of Laharl's feathers I found in his base to undo the first curse that happened when it was made, turning it into a weapon of pure goodness and justice. Now, no evildoer could ever wield it. Only I could wield the battle axe. On day 100, I returned to the meadow with the new and improved super justified hero axe and faced off against the killer rabbit. Why did you come back? I might have let you live for a while. I had to. There is a whole world out there that needs to be protected from rotten rabbits like you. There is a young Mermex queen who will hatch today. There is a hippogriff who is my best friend. For them, for everyone, my fires of good will burn out your evil. 
The killer rabbit hopped at me, but with the battle axe in my hand, my attacks were strong enough to take his hearts away. Curse you, Zozo! Haven't you got it yet? I can't be cursed. I blasted him with fireball after fireball, and then swung the battle axe down on him, ending the fight! There is a new rabbit in this land, and he's a protector rabbit.